Welcome to Dwarven Forge. This is everything you need to know about our terrain in 60 seconds. Ready? Let's go. We hand sculpt our pieces for maximum detail and artistry, infusing passion into every millimeter of our work. Everything is available beautifully hand painted so you can start playing right away. Or you can choose unpainted to paint everything yourself. Our pieces are completely modular so you can use the same sets to create a new adventure every time. Most pieces have embedded anchor magnets that affix to our terrain trays for secure building and for revealing rooms as your players discover them. We create everything out of Dwarvenite, our top secret PVC formula that's nearly indestructible. We pack our pieces with as many features as possible, such as swappable LEDs to quickly change the look of your scene. We offer magnetic accessories to add flavor or increase the danger. A one-inch tactical grid is sculpted into our floors, hidden in dungeon flagstones, natural rocks, or sticks and plants. In addition to sculpted pieces, we make terrain trays to use as a vibrant graphic base for your build. We offer a range of environments, including dungeons, caverns, cities, castles, sewers, forests, mountains, streets, burrows, ice, and hellscape. And that's just the beginning. We have a passionate fan base who can tell you all about it. And that's everything you need to know about Dwarven Forge in 60 seconds. The games we play are the stories we create. The fortress doors swing open. Every story is unique. And the sound of war drums rises. Sometimes our stories come to us when we least expect them. We need to be ready no matter where inspiration strikes. And sometimes our stories are told over great distances. No matter where your journey leads you or how your story is told. The games we play are the stories we create. Sirenscape can help make yours epic. Sirenscape is searchable, fast, and customizable from any device with no need to pre-install any sound. Adding epic atmosphere to your game has never been easier. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Into the Mist. It is our Curse of Strahd campaign. Uh, this is the season premiere of season four. Uh, episode one, very excited. We took two weeks off. Uh, we're replenished and re-energized and recharged and ready to jump into the craziness that we left the party off with at the end of last season. Um, a couple of really quick announcements we'll go through and then we'll jump right into the action. First, of, of course, we wanna thank Dungeons & Dragons for creating this incredible game that we play uh, week in and week out. Uh, we wanna thank our first main title sponsor, Hero Forge. They're an incredible online tool for creating uh, miniatures and avatars for your tabletop gaming experience. You can check them out at www.heroforge.com. In fact, I printed today, for those of you that know, you'll see it on camera soon, uh, a uh, naked ethereal fulfur um, that will be making his appearance in tonight's episode. Um, spoiler warning for those that have not seen last season. Uh, our second main title sponsor is Beetle and Grimms. Um, they are an incredible creator of premium boxed experiences for your D&D &D and other tabletop game experiences. I now officially in my hands have the Van Richten's uh, Guide to Ravenloft Silver Edition box. Um, love it, it's incredible. I'll be doing an unboxing of this soon. And we did say that we were gonna do a giveaway. We had a bit, bit of a referral um, campaign uh, that people would invite people in um, to the Discord and you would get ballots in the um, 
in the giveaway. And so we're gonna give away the silver edition of that to someone who is not actually currently on our, on our Discord, but is uh, part of our uh, community. And that is Don number 3417. He is on our Discord, sorry, he's not necessarily in our RP community, uh, but it's Don3417, congratulations, you have won the Silver Edition box, and our people will be in touch with you to get your information so that we can get that out to you. So congratulations to you on that. Um, Sirenscape is an, our other main title sponsor. They uh, create an amazing online tool for adding ambiance and sound effects to your tabletop games. Sirenscape.com slash Realmsmith is where you want to go and you can search for all of the awesome sound sets that we've created as well as the uh, D&D official content that they also offer on their service. Um, you'll be hearing a lot of Sirenscape tonight. We use it every week and we love them over there at Sirenscape. I want to thank our other pro product sponsors as usual. WizKids for a lot of the minis at the table. Dwarven Forge for a lot of the terrain. Uh, Mithril Armory. Uh, they actually just finished one of their Kickstarters. We'll talk about that when we come back from the intro. Um, and they are also sponsoring our Natural 20 animations. Uh, so anytime a Natural 20 is rolled, you will see this occur on the screen. Um, and uh, thank you, Mithril, for doing that. Uh, you can check that out at, at uh, stoneheart.ca. Um, they're gearing up for that Kickstarter, hopefully in the near future. Uh, and then of course, D&D Beyond, everything that we do uh, character-wise and encounter-wise is powered by D&D Beyond. And we wanna thank them for their ongoing support. Our Discord Patreon uh, combo has been amazing. Um, there's a lot that's happened over the last little while, but if you're interested, uh, our Discord has lots of really cool things that you can do, even if you're not a patron. If you want to be a patron and support the channel, you can create a character in our roleplay channels and play as a Vistani in Barovia. There's lots of craziness happening, including the splitting of Camp Gakkus and the moving to different camps, which has happened recently based on information that the party found on stream. Um, there's a lot of really fun stuff going on, and the new guide to the Vistani will be launching tomorrow. Uh, evening um, and you will have a bunch of updates and all that kind of stuff um, for that. I uh, want to thank our Smith Guardians of course as usual they are uh, incredible uh, when it comes to creating content for the Patreon, running the Discord and all that stuff. They are behind the scenes folks that really are the lifeblood of Realmsmith and make sure that everything goes as well as our Realm Watchers who are the moderators in the chat uh, on, our, on, on our Discord. Uh, and they also keep an eye on things, which is amazing. So thank you to them. We do have merch, um, awesome merch. If you wanna support the channel, that's a great way to do that. We have Into the Mist and Tides of Wildmount merch. And last month we launched some Pride merch as well. And you can check that out under the video um, in our our merch store uh, and uh, again great way to support the channel aftermath is this Thursday that is the semi spoilerific look of what has happens behind the scenes at Realmsmith that is when we have a couple of members of the cast join us for a chat live uh, to ask tough questions and discuss the episode that has just passed as well as their characters and all that kind of stuff we also just recently announced in our discord that we are considering it's not for sure but we are considering doing RealmCon in october there's a lot of things that have to happen before that including the borders opening up between the united states and canada um but the way that things are going right now, we, it is looking very good. There's lots of interest. So if you are interested in joining us for RealmCon sometime in October, uh, and what RealmCon will be is it's not a full-blown convention, it's a fan event. So it's an opportunity to meet the cast, to play D&D with all of us. There will be seminars, there will be live, like live audience, live streams, probably of the finale of this season as we announce the dates on that. So it'll be an amazing opportunity. It will take place in Toronto um, and we will have hotel, uh, a, a block of hotels basically reserved for people. And then we will hold the event somewhere really super cool um, for you all to meet all of us. And it'll be an incredible, awesome opportunity. If you're interested, join us on the Discord. You can join, you don't have to pay or anything like that or become a patron. There is a RealmCon channel and let us know that you're interested. Um, um, uh, obviously, there also will be a virtual aspect to that as well um, that we will share with people. Uh, if you like what you see today, make sure that you subscribe uh, and that you share, as well as hit that bell icon on YouTube to be notified. You can also follow us on, twi uh, on Twitch um, and on all of our socials at Realmsmith TV. Without further ado, season four, let us venture into the mists.
All right, hello cast, welcome back to season four. Um, before we jump in, we started on this screen because I want to show everyone the uh, the naked ethereal felfer in the doorway. Um, oh, I had to. Um, thank you to what? Hero Forge that and Elegu for the 3D printer that allowed <laughs> me to print this wondrous thing. Anyways. Um, couple things uh, real quick before we go. Um, Mithril, you guys had a great Kickstarter that just ended. Congratulations on that. Um, how, how did it go? Yeah, it went, uh, it went great. Uh, we, uh, so about a year ago, we launched the Tin 20s, which was a, a credit card sized metal card that folded into a uh, usable D20. And people said, we want the whole set, build a build them all out. So we did that and we got some of our favorite artists, uh, you, to design the faces. <laughs> uh, and we managed to unlock two of the designs. So we have a polished one that's just shiny like the tin 20s from last year. Uh, we have the green leafy one, which we called natural. And we have the fire oh, yeah. version, which has fire on it. Uh, but we, we did we did well. We set out to raise a thousand bucks to order the the minimum we had to, and we raised seventeen thousand. So, wow! Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, good. So yeah, we we'll love we love making little creative creative different things. That's great. I can't wait to get my yeah. dice. I'm excited. Super fun. Congratulations, guys. What's uh, do you know what's next for Mithril? Yeah, yeah. I think we're gonna be uh, releasing an update to the sketch dice. Cool. Uh, we 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 sold seven hundred and sixty of them from the last Kickstarter. Um, so we got some good feedback from, from the backers and customers, and we've replaced the the tips in them yep. so they don't clog. Um, and the yellow, for some reason, just kept separating. So we, we huh. swapped out some of the colors cool. and we got new tips so they're, they're much easier and better to use now. Uh, so we're gonna be uh, launching that soon. Awesome. Probably and in like two weeks. That's great. Yep. Okay, stay tuned, folks. Um, non-stop Kickstarters from Mithril, it's awesome. Really great stuff. Uh, Omega, you have a really big announcement for us that was announced today, is that right? Uh, it's about to be announced in probably the next 10 seconds. Uh, You'll hear I, it here first. Yeah, you hear, you're literally hearing it first. I am going to be one of the new uh, announced celebrity DMs for D3 at Sea, which is a six day vacation cruise uh, in the Caribbean that is all D&D, all tabletop, all epic awesomeness. Uh, other DMs include B. Dave Walters, Tiny to Pass, uh, Adam Bradford, the folks over at D4. Just a really cool group, and I'm very excited to be there. Uh, it's going to be March 13th through the 19th in 2022, obviously. Uh, obviously, COVID things will be uh, in effect. We're just making sure everybody's staying healthy and safe. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. You should check it out. You can go to d3atc.com for more info. So fun. Uh, hopefully, you can be at my table, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, so, yeah, that, that that's me. That's so great. We'll see <laughs> at sea. Awesome. D3 at sea. All right. Mm. Let's jump into it. Last time we left you, folks. You were at the Vistani camp. We call them the Strahdstani. Uh, Vistani who are loyal to Strahd. Um, all kinds of craziness ensued and the Vistani were dispersed. The Dusk Elves were thankful. Um, and you found Solace at Camp Gacchus, uh, delivering a message in the form of uh, maps and a letter from Strahd himself to the Strahdstani regarding the defenses of Gacchus uh, and how uh, the Vistani there kind of conducted business daily. Um, basically giving an idea of an imminent threat, um, of something that was on the horizon. Um, also, Strahd implored the Strahdstani to start gathering people as they come through the mists to his, um, to, to his side, to his cause. Um, which obviously caused the Vistani at Gacchus some um, issue and concern. You ended up spending a number of days there, um, and a couple of nights went fairly uneventful until Falfer one night disappeared. Uh, Sterling, knowing he had left the tent, thought Falfer was just up to his kind of regular no goodness. And um, unfortunately, to your dismay, when you woke in the morning, he was gone, along with all of his belongings. Um, we are going to start off with the party. Um, 
all of you have been traversing Gagakis, asking questions, found out at the tower that uh, Falfer had left out the front gate um, and was has been gone, you think, some five to, five, five to seven hours um, previous. So he left really, really early uh, in the morning, um, and now you all are waking to find that he has left some time ago. Uh, with this information, what do you guys want to do? I guess we just uh, let him go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Was he actually relevant to the party? Probably not. Um, Tra Travas is going to wait for the lead uh, from everybody else because because uh, this is the second time since we met that Falfer's just gone off on his own. It's probably just what he does. Right. But if it was going to be a long time, he would have said something. Oh. It's true. Shouldn't... I don't think he would have wandered off willy-nilly, though. Has to be a reason. Well, I'm, a little, did I'm sure there is, but I'm a little worried. Went or something? Yeah, so, out the front gate, but there's a bit of a walk until the road. I mean, I can, I can track pretty good if we need to go find him. I would think that he would have said something like you said. So. Um, yeah, this doesn't sound well. I can't say that because he does leave a lot. Um, this still sounds bad, or does it sound bad? It, it does sound bad. This this isn't entirely like him. I wouldn't expect him to just disappear in the night and not not return in the morning or by morning. I, I thought he was just maybe pulling a prank on someone. I don't know. Anyway, Sure, he left no clues as to his whereabouts. There's nothing, nothing he left behind. Just hey, uh, Jay, really quickly, yep. typical like a typical weather day in Barovia. Yeah. What is it like? Uh, overcast, sometimes drizzle, um, chilling, but it's fairly temperate. In Gakis, it's a, it's quite a bit colder. It's closer to the mountain and up yeah. the, the hills a little bit. Is it windy? No, not typically. That's the good thing. Um, I can at least look for footprints to just see if I if they left anything. Just I can at least we can start searching. Yeah. I don't think we should linger too long. I agree. Yes. Yes, I, I'll help as however I can. Should we start at the gates? The only place to start if he left through the gates. Okay. Yeah. You're leading right. the charge tracking? Mm -hmm. Omega? Yeah. Okay. Give yep. me a survival check. Yep. With some guidance on myself. Uh, uh, ooh, plus. Ooh, 23. Okay. With the 23, um, luckily, uh, you it had rained last night. And so his tracks are fairly um, clear, even now, uh, in the mud. Uh, and obviously being the size that he is, it's easy to discern his halfling footprints. Um, uh, well, good thing that he decides to run and not actually try to cover up the things that he does, because I do see his feet. Good. Well, that's mm. good. Very good. Excellent. Also, if he's not running, he wasn't in danger at that point. It doesn't seem like with the 23, running. you can tell that he was going with purpose at a brisk pace, mm -hmm. but not not running. Yeah. No, I don't think he was running. I don't think he was in fear or anything or it mm -hmm. seemed urgent, but not urgent, you know? Well, that's good. At least we'll keep going. I just don't know why he'd wander off and not say anything. He hasn't quite been himself, has he? I, I mean, to be stuff. fair, he also decided to go off by himself when he went into the evil-aligned uh, Vistani um, camp without saying anything and almost died because of it. So honestly, this is, you know... Y you thought he would learn his lesson? You would think. Well, right. it, from experience, it normally takes Felfer a couple tries to learn a lesson, so... We'll give him that. 
Well, it seems like in Barovia you don't get a couple of tries. So let's um, try I, I, to not continue to do that. Hmm. At least if he wasn't being chased, um, we know we're probably not going to run into anything dangerous. But again, this is Barovia. <sighs> All right. Uh, I'm just going to keep following the tracks. And okay. I guess keep looking. Travas leans towards Sterling and, and asks, Are goats good at tracking? Well, it appears that this one is. You know, and I can hear you, right? I was going to say he's... I don't think he's a goat, right, Noggins? I mean, um, I'm not the smartest, but uh, technically it's the closest equivalent to the bestial kingdom. I see. Then, uh, Travas, perhaps you would like to ask Noggins your question. No, it's okay. It was just a joke from another episode where we talked about using a goat for tracking. Uh, what? What's an episode? <laughs> I have no idea. Forget. I think this is a Vistani <laughs> thing. <laughs> we should go. I'm assuming we're like walking and talking. <laughs> yes. yes. Let's assume that. All right. As you track the prince, and with the 23, I'm going to say that you have no problem kind of tracking his movements. Um, you notice that they travel up through the Gakkas foothills and out along the Svalik Road, they turn onto the road heading west on the East Road. They snake up through the Svalik Woods across the bridge uh, that crosses the Ivlis River, and they continue to head northwest all the way until you hit Bone Grinder, um, and they continue past. And that puts you uh, about an hour into your trip. Just over an hour. And continue going. You all continue? Okay. I don't think there's anything at Bone Grinder we need. Yeah, I think we're out focused on finding Falfer, so... Yeah, yeah, keep going. Okay. You continue to head west as it snakes around, passing Velaki. I'm um, assuming you don't go through the Velaki, but you head south around, branching off the road as Falfer did. Um, as you follow his tracks, it crosses another bridge um, of the Luna River, which heads up to... Lake Zarovich, uh, and then you notice that his tracks take the road south um, towards Berez. And that is where we're going to leave the party at the moment and head back to Muskoka and Falfer. The two of you sit on the stoop, or stand rather, on the stoop of the cottage. Falfer, of course, having used the oil of etherealness, um, you are currently on the border ethereal, the plane or the veil between two worlds or two planes. Uh, you, met Musco uh, you, you met Muskoka or the ghost of Muskoka. You had a somewhat brief interaction regarding what you were going to do, but you have been called here by the hag Morgantha. Her prodding you, asking you to come alone because she had a proposition for you. You heeded her words, and now you stand on the stoop looking in to the cottage. As you peer into the cottage, you see, you see, as I mentioned previously, in a rocking chair to the left, Morgantha sits in front of the fire. And actually, I'll do this so you can get an actual full view of what is happening here. As I mentioned, uh, Morganta sits in front of the fire in a rocking chair as she rocks carefully. Uh, against the back wall is the a, a green hag, uh, the first that you've seen, but she's larger. She has pockmarks and um, blisters and moles all over her body. And you can see that she wears a blood kind of stained apron. Mm. You also see to the right a round table which is packed full of meat pies. 
and her daughter sits kneading dough, or stands rather, kneading dough at this table. And as you walk in, she just continues to do it, almost like you're not there. You notice that the green hag kind of looks on and watches you as you enter. Morgantha sitting in the rocking chair, holding what appears to be a pregnant belly as she strokes it. And you can see under the skin, it, undul it undulating? <laughs> That's the right word. Mm -hmm. You can see movement that seems quite unnatural. And she says again, Welcome. We have much to discuss, Falfer. What do you do? Yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to back up, not knowing there were three hags that were going to be there. I will back up slowly down the steps and go, ah, I'm so sorry, a wrong place. <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll turn towards the steps and Muskoka and say, hey, buddy, how about, how about uh, perhaps maybe you could go in since you're already dead. <laughs> Oh, no, I don't think so. Um, have they seen us at the door? Like, we just kicked oh, open yeah. the door? Oh, yeah, they're all aware. That, she we knows just, you're there. Uh, just... You opened the door, and you walked in, and there they were, yeah, standing. Of course, of course we did. She's in the back corner, is that? She is by the fire. Oh. She is here sitting She's in a rocking chair. This is that's, the green That's Morgantha there. And this is her daughter. So this is Morgantha right here, in front of the fire, sitting in front of the fire as she creaks. <laughs> D does this house seem to be like the other house where it just gets up and starts walking around and killing things? Um, Good question. Give me a um, perception check. Perception is that is that gonna is that intelligence no, it's or wisdom. wisdom? Good. A six. Um, with a six, oh, I forgot something here. I forgot to do this. Um, with a six, uh, it's clearly different. Like, you can tell that um, the makeup of this cottage, as you look up at it, you can see that there are vines kind of building this cottage. And though it's in the border ethereal and everything on the material plane is gray, this is not. This is full color, full opacity, and solid. You can touch it as if it only exists here and does not exist on the material plane. Um, but it seems to be mm. weaving itself together. The vines are growing and bringing the wood back together. And you're watching as it's almost rebuilding itself. Mm. Um, there's no indication right now that it is has the ability to get up and walk around like it used to. Um, and you don't see that greenish glow under the crib that caused that to happen. So you imagine that that's probably not the case. Well, I, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna, <laughs> I was gonna say I grab Balfour's clothing. He doesn't have any. Um, I'm going to tap him on his shoulder and just kind of like, come here. And I try to call him around the corner outside of the hut just for a second. Yeah. And we're just so, going to. So I'll walk, I'll walk down the steps and, and, uh, you know, without, I, I'm covering myself up to try to be decent, aware that Muskoka, who is already dead and it's inconsequential to the ladies in the, in the house, <laughs> assuming, assuming they're hags. They, you know, see me as, as a, as a ongoing mate in the future. I'll just, I'll, you know, I'll just say, uh, yeah, of course. Um, but, uh, <laughs> forgive me if I, uh, forgive me if I cover up a little bit and I, I'll, as, as he does that tap on my shoulder, I'll, I'll walk down the steps briskly and try okay. to get Can over to my clothes, Jay, which are on the pile there or beside okay. the pile, the pyre rather. And I'm going to warn him, be careful on those steps. <laughs> I will, I will, thank you. Um, so we, as you walk down, happens. you walk, sorry, you walk over to the pyre where your clothes are? Yeah, if I can, I'll walk over to the pyre where my clothes are. Okay, you do so. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. And, uh, and I will attempt, to, I know this is futile, but I'll attempt to grab my clothes in, in a 
you know, covering up my my ass while I'm reaching down, just because this seems so odd. Like my friend is around, and you know, so can I please have is my? Is there a back raven here? feather that I can hand him? <laughs> so as so, yeah. you as you is go to grab, got... as you go to grab your clothes, um, they're they're gray, and you, your hand passes right through them. Uh, as they exist uh, on the material I, I, plane. I, I mean, I knew that would happen, but uh, from inside you hear anything that. Falfa, you're being is quite there... rude. I just want to talk. Please join us for a conversation. Why did you even come back here? I was. I was trying to make amends and at the same time trying to defeat these stupid hags and thought perhaps I could discover some weakness of theirs. But clearly, I did not think this fully through. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I, 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 okay, fine. You are presenting me with questions, but you're not presenting me with solutions. Only problems. Miss Koki, if you have any solutions, go ahead. He can't wear my clothing, right? As a ghost, like I'm, I got, I'm wearing like ghost clothing. Yeah, like it's all it's all ethereal. Your I whole entire I body, can't. your gear that you were wearing, is all ethereal. So I can't, I can't like hand him something to cover himself up. Not really. Like I couldn't just pop a like a button off for him. No, it's not the same thing. Okay. <laughs> what? What? Why do? You, but so so. What are you hoping happens here? That we go and talk to Morgantha and she just agrees to leave you alone, or that we kill her somehow? I just, I was, I was concerned for my friends, and we have been dealing with this stupid hag problem for so long, and she offered me in the note uh, an opportunity to, uh, to, uh, to make a difference. So that was my hope. I'm sorry. I am maybe the only person in Barovia who still has a little bit of hope. Wait, so Morgantha offered you an opportunity and you thought that was a good one? <laughs> I mean, like I said, I'm maybe the only person in Barovia who still has hope. And mine is literal. What, what's so bad about that? Falfer, give me a wisdom saving throw, please. Yes, Oof. sir. And that will be huh, a nine, all told. Um, that smell of the meat pies is almost unbearable as it hits <laughs> your nose. And your uh, hands start to shake and you start to salivate as it but perhaps begins to draw Muskoka, you inside. I Perhaps I, I, I can make some kind of a partnership with them that um, keeps them from affecting the rest of, y of the party. I mean, maybe there's some solution inside that provides us with a safer uh, way forward. <laughs> so I'll just uh, pretend that I'm wearing my clothing <laughs> and go back up <laughs> the steps ever so, <laughs> and I'll walk up the I'll, I'll walk back towards the steps and uh with every ounce of internal debate inside go like please 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 let there be a solution inside please 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 let there be something i can do inside okay and uh yeah go up to the top of the steps again okay. at the door and you just want to be basically in the doorway yeah i want to i'll eye the pies and I'll eye the hags. Yeah. Um, and that's what I'll do. Um, Morgantha says, you can have one. Oh, I just want to talk. No. Do I? Do, I Please. know that those are the, the pies, right? Help yourself. Can I can tell those are, those are the pies? Yes, you imagine that's what she's talking about. But, but we're in this weird world. Are they made of like ethereal children that aren't really children? Well, you don't know. They look real. They look solid. Hey, Muskoka, do you say that out loud? No, I'm just pondering. I'm just, I'm, mm. no, sorry. But I mean, I feel like if it's a dream, like Falfer, if this, like, what do I, what do I know? Do I, do I have any sense of, of like, these are actual, like, otherworldly children? Or are they, is this like a dream? It would is be like really a difficult to tell what's in pies? the pies. Yeah. 
I mean, uh, give me a perception check. Okay. See what you can glean. Falfor, that urge is unbearable. Yeah. I... (laughs) Screw you, Jay. Jay. Um, You you rolled it. (laughs) I I know. I know. I still would rather you be to blame. Um, (laughs) So I will... I will go towards uh, the pies ever so slightly and say... uh, to Muskoka, turn back to Muskoka and say, hey, listen, I have to, uh, I just have to test to make sure these are ethereal pies. They're not real. I cannot, look at me, I'm a ghost. They won't affect me. I just need to, just need that uh, to know if this state that I'm in has taste buds, you know? <laughs> and I'll walk towards the pies even further. Okay. You are now at the table with the pies on it. One right facing you, that smell wafting in your direction. Uh, I will. Muskoka doesn't stop him. Like, I, I think they're just like imaginary dream pies of like, maybe at worst, it's like the souls of children. <laughs> like, I don't know if that's better. <laughs> yeah, because I'd rather eat but that's the like, souls you of children. Yeah, but you can't cut meat off of a soul. So what do you what do you do, Muskoka, while well, Falfer's inside? Oh, I'm I'm. I'm eyeing Morgantha with disdain and hatred for her little abomination. Like, it's like another one I've, I'm going to have to deal with. Okay. But you're staying outside uh, the, the cottage currently? No, I'll walk in. I'll walk in uh, just a couple feet just so I can ke- I can see Falfer going for the pies. Yeah. And, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll watch Morgantha. Okay. All right. Can, can I, um, can I turn towards Morgantha and just have a, have a simple question, Morgantha? Um, so I noticed you are expecting a small bundle yourself. Um, where, what do you expect you'll be doing with that one? Well, I mean, <laughs> she looks at you. You just left Baba's baby lying there i just repurposed it you're saying baba's baby is inside your belly right now it is now my baby and now she does not even want to know how you got her back over in the there. surface of the belly under the surface of the belly oh she says go ahead have a bite and we can have a conversation i will not harm you you have my word <laughs> <laughs> but am I correct to think you just uh, either ate a baby or, or somehow placed it back inside you? Listen, uh, okay, fine. I will have one piece only. One piece! Muskoka, hold me accountable here for a moment. Simply oh, one oh, piece. I feel like that's the opposite of what I'm doing. Um, I, I, I'm going to go over and I'm just going to take a look at the pies. Hey, let's let's just make sure there's no razor blades or anything. And I wanna, I'm just gonna like kind of break one open. Do yeah. I notice if he picks? Does he? Can he pick? I one I wanna up? take the one in front of you and try to break it in half and see. Does this look investigation like check for you, Muskoka? Um, and as you do this, as you both start to dig in uh, for the first time, the daughter's eyes kind of flick up, and you see that she's got these purple pupils. This dark, dark skin looks a lot like her mother with these horns that come off and she's scraggly. And you see her, the big toothy grin as she goes back to meet, kneading the dough. Yeah. With a I got a natural 20 to see if it's child meat. Okay. Um, it does not appear to be child meat that you can tell with a natural 20. <laughs> mm. It actually smells a little bit and looks a little bit like goat meat. Oh, okay. Well, now we're talking. <laughs> uh, Do you relay any of this, Muskoka? I'm going to take a bite. Okay, it's delicious. Oh, oh. yeah, it's it's good. It's good for it. it's just goat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take a bite. I'll take a bite. And, like he, this guy's like really confused as to why it's just like a normal pie now. It's delicious. Uh, 
Um, Falfer. Yeah. Um, as you start to shove some of it into your mouth, it's delicious. Um, and the smell has you captivated, but you don't necessarily feel the same addiction to the taste of the pie as you used to. Uh, it's good mm. and it's familiar, but it's not quite the same. Morganta says, well, shall we get back down to business? I asked you here for a reason and I know your friends are waiting. I wouldn't want to keep you long. I'll turn towards her and, and be like, of course, back to business. These pies, have, have they changed much since? The recipe has uh, shifted. Hmm. Now, I have a proposition for you. If you will listen, then you will hear me out. Okay. I have, wait, I have no, uh, I have no implements for taking notes or anything. Actually, I have nothing, as you can see. It's um, quite simple. Okay. If you promise that you and your little band of Deathbringers will dispose of Lord Strahd, I will give you the secrets of how to enter the castle Ravenloft undetected. I have a mouse in that wretched old house of his. The secrets of the castle are yours, if you promise. As long as you are moving towards your goal, I will leave you and your friends unmolested. Moreover, I will also allow, sorry, I will also remove the taint I have painted on yours and the goat's soul. Then, when the time comes, and you're ready to enter the castle, I will be your guide. The voice in your head that will lead you right to him. By the quickest and least dangerous means possible. Then, when the deed is done, you will be rid of me and this cursed land for good. What do you say, Le Piedon? Uh, forgive me if I just uh, repeat some things back to you so that I make sure that I got it right, uh, Miss uh, Hag Lady. So Morganta is fine. We are okay, the sorry. Basis. <laughs> Morganta, listen, so secrets of Ravenloft, how to get in undetected, um, you are telling me this because you have someone in the home who is telling you some information. As long as I pursue Strahd and the rest of the party pursues Strahd, we will be safe. And you will also remove this curse that is both on me and my friend Noggins. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, she's going to remove their taint. Absolutely. Okay, well... I mean, what, what's the downside? It, it, explain to me what the ramifications, what are the negatives? There is none. The deal is what I have stated. <laughs> Listen, okay, but I, I okay, okay, but what moment? One moment only. If I do this, I need some reassurances from you. I mean, I'm, I'm going to do you a favor here. So how about do me one too? Um, okay. This is what I need. I need to know that uh, Sterling, who was uh, scratched in the head by you or, or your um, friends here, that he is safe. That there is, you will not, you've not mentioned him yet. And I want to make sure that he is safe. He is safe. As long as you proceed towards your goal, do not oppose me or my sister and my daughter, then yes, he is safe. You all are safe from us. I assure you. I promise. As long... Okay, okay. then explain me this. Why is it Why is it that you want Strahd so gone so badly? I mean, you are the most strange uh, allies. <laughs> this does not make any sense to me. Because us, much like you, just want to go home. It's as mm. simple as that. With him gone, we can return. Yes. So what are you doing with this baby? Uh, 
Give so, me a uh, persuasion check. Is that charisma? That's charisma, right? Oh, it's a five. Reproducing, Muskoka. That is all. It is our mm. way. Ah. Babala Saga is baby in your belly. As long as we take Strahd out. Uh, I mean, okay. I cannot see why this would be a bad. I mean, perhaps uh, you. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> Let's go get it. That is a promise. Oh. You, you, what? you said as long as they don't oppose you. What are you trying to do? Not sure what you mean, Miss Goga. Oh, it's my accent. I am trying to leave. And you, mm. if they succeed, will also be free. You will do it, Father. Uh, Is that right? I must hear you say you promise. Huh. Thank you for that uh, graciousness. Okay, I'll turn to Muskoka and I'll say, uh, my friend, I do wish for you to have a, a peaceful afterlife. And if this is goodbye for real, and know that I am truly sorry, sorry for what I have uh, done to you in the past. I would not be here right now if that were not the case. Morgantha, I'll lean forward with my one free hand and and attempt to shake hers. <laughs> I promise. She reaches out and she grabs your hand and these her long bony fingers and you can feel her claws on the back of your hand as they pierce just slightly. Mm. And she lets go. It is a promise. promise. We have a deal. Deal. You may go. I'm... I am going, uh, and I will gently and slowly, with my back towards the door, move back out um, and attempt to step downwards, still covering, and uh, yeah, and uh, and make my way to the pyre. Okay, you head over to the pyre. Both of you leave, untested. As you leave the door. closes of its own volition. And you step up to the pyre. You both stand there. <laughs> can you... Can, I, can you believe I just did that? Oh my... Oh my dear, it's, it's, it's fantastic. The, the others... Okay, what is our story here? Um, we went well, to in... Be on, to be honest, I'm not sure exactly what you've done. No, okay. But here, here's... Hold... here's but that, what, what, yes, you're right. Um, let's get the story straight. Okay. So, well, I'm not we... going to be there. So, huh? Oh, well, yeah. only you've got to explain it to them. I, I don't. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. Fair point. But let me run this by you. Okay. So, we crashed through the door and the hags were there. And we, uh, we convinced them very sternly. Listen, hags, you must. Uh, do as we say, free our friends. And if you do not, we will uh, eliminate you from this world forever to be forgotten. But they could not take being forgotten. So they said, but uh, okay. Ah, I think I've got it. It's, it's fine. We will go back to the friends and we have defeated the hags. This is great news. This is great it's, news. It sounds perfect. Okay. Um, um, if, if you ever do come back here, though, you don't need to take off all your clothes. <laughs> I, lesson, lesson learned. <laughs> I, I should really have thought that through first. As with most of my great moves, I was surprised by the ending, as most people are. You feel uh, your body begin to start to phase back and forth a little bit, knowing that the the oil that you had placed on your body is starting to potentially fade. Is my clothing also phasing in and out? Um, no, you just see, you see that you become kind of 
gr okay. gray, and you're coming in and out of the plane of existence. Cool. Meaning you probably uh, have about 10 minutes left, if that. Well, that's 10 minutes is a long time. I was going to try to say goodbye now, but that's going to be a really awkward 10 well, we can, minutes. We can speed it up after that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to shake his hand and, and say goodbye, friend, in a dramatic moment as he disappeared. But then I feel like there's still like nine minutes and 40 seconds of shaking his hand to go. <laughs> so we just, so Dave, so you, well, you so can decide when to end and Falfer, Falfer. Just, just stand there looking at each other awkwardly yeah. for yeah. nine I'll minutes. I'll just keep shaking his hand, just smiling and nodding. Okay. Any final words to each other? I just um, say goodbye, friend, and uh, shake until he fades out. <laughs> yeah, Trying to keep my eyes saying, on his I'll, eyes. I'll, I'll, I'll keep, I mean, I can't do anything else <laughs> because my, both hands are busy. So I'm just going to wait till he lets go of my hand and I phase back into existence. Okay. As you phase back in, um, everything goes, as you press kind of your hands through, you start to pass through and you can see on the other side your gray fingers of your ethereal bo body pressing through. And as your face begins to press through, everything goes dark. Mm. Muskoka, you watch as Falfer passes through and then falls unconscious on the material plane. What? That wasn't supposed to happen. Now, oh my back gosh. to the rest of the party. You all travel south along the road to Berez, or the trail to Berez. You pass Argon Vostolt, Dimitri, the presence, oh, and the that wave at Godfrey, and the <laughs> and the pride you feel as you pass. As you approach the area, you can see um, an unnatural amount of spiders that reside in the area. And as you pass, they kind of scatter around you. You move, you move further in and you start to see little wooden figurines hanging from the trees away from the trail in the woods. And as you approach, they become more and more in number. And you can, you watch and you follow as Falfer's Prince lead towards Baba Les Saga's cottage or where it once was. What do you do? As soon as I see like all of these dolls coming up, I just sword is drawn, but uh, approaching carefully. Okay. Uh, are the spiders as big as the ones that we fought in Argonvas? Though, are the what's? No, nope, they're just tiny. They're just normal, normal spiders, but they're just in great number. Uh, are they just hanging like it's just like a string and a little wooden doll? Yeah, like twine and a wooden doll. Yeah. Um, I'm going to. Uh, he reaches up and takes one, and cuts the rope okay. to take one down. Okay. And as you look at it, it looks like a individual with a hat that has flaps on it, shield on his back, axes in his hands, and he stands straight. And you've never seen this I got this a Muskoka before. action figure? You've never seen Muskoka, so you don't know who it is. Okay. Uh, Noggin just kind of looks around. He starts to get a little jittery a little bit. Just, um, why would Falfer come back here? Hmm. Our idea, except that this is where we, this is where we buried Muskoka. Well, this um, is where you found me too. It's just yes. And you all, as you look around and as you kind of see Travas kind of pull it off, and as he comes close, you do see that every figurine, and there's hundreds, are an effigy of Muskoka. <gasps> And you're about Dad, halfway he's... now through through the, the ruins of Berez. Did he do this? Oh, I oh, okay. I think it's I think it's making sense now. 
I think he wanted to have like a a private um, moment with his friend, so he left us and he he took the time to to carve out these little 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 figures for his friend. I think mm. Falfer made all these. There's no way. No, he didn't have that much time. I mean, How would we reach out for trees? a couple of hours? We, we all mourn differently, and he was especially reminiscent at the campfire the other night. Um, Still weird that he wouldn't tell us, but okay. It's a lot of little... No, bombs. something's not right. Could he have been making them at, at the camp before he left? Well, I certainly never saw anything like that. I didn't either. Maybe it was like a secret project. Yes. It's, well, obviously we weren't meant to to find to find out. He left without telling anyone. Sterling, give me a perception check. Eleven. As you kind of all stand, you start to notice your shadows begin to move almost on their own sometimes. And you'll see one of your companions kind of standing there and their shadow will kind of like look around them and then go back to normal. Your shadows seem abnormally gaunt behind each of you in the area. There's something very, very strange and different than the last time you came through here. My friends, your shadows, they seem to move of their own accord and they do not match your own stature. Hmm. As you look up, Sterling, through the trees, over Travassa's shoulder, some 50 feet out, you see the visage of your father standing amongst the trees, knee deep in swamp. Daddy. No, child. It's Daddy. It looks like him. I'm certain of it. What? What are you saying? My father, he stands in the swamp just over there. I see him clear as day. I'll look over. Do I see him too? No. I, I take out my, my sickle. I draw around me as I cast Detect Magic. Okay. Um, as you look around... Um, there is a haze um, of very, um, almost like a th thin mist of sparkling magical energy that kind of surrounds the area. So nothing pinpointed, but there is a general presence of magic in the swamp. And the only other magic items you see are the ones that are held by your comrades. Um, uh, is it just like a general haze of magic? Does it feel like it's leaning towards a specific type of school or just vibe or just, just like a, a general? It's just like a thick magical soup almost. Like there is something affecting the area around Berez. Mm. Um, Sterling, I don't know who your father is, but no one's here. Um, there's a lot of it's 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 thick with uh, uh, lots of magic here. Something's affecting it. It wasn't here before. Yes, I'm sure it's not him, Sterling. And I, when I touch Sterling's shoulder, I'll cast detect. Uh, I'll cast protection from evil. On him. Okay. Um, I'm gonna close my eyes and and use divine sense. Um, if it within 60 feet, um, not behind total cover. If there's fiends, undead, celestials. Fiends, undead, celestials. No. Within sorry, 60 feet was that? Yes. Yeah. Nothing. Hmm. Sterling reaches down to touch the book of poems and make sure it's still there. Is Faye um, one of those? Sorry. Uh, no, not Faye. Okay. Um, is do I still see this? 
Um, yes. And he just stands. Knee deep in swamp water. Just looking at you. And he's not speaking or anything, just looking? Silent. But I say that since we were here before uh, and dealing with Baba La Saga, can I say that I would know to cast or feel like I could cast uh, when I cast that spell that it would be against Faye? Um, sorry, can you, you, because you can decide what it's against, right? Yes, but I don't want to meta, so I, I would say that because we were there yeah. dealing with Baba La Saga, well, that that's what I would... To add to, to that, yeah. with my detect magic being fey, do I get that this is a fey type of magic? Does it feel different from like arcane or druidic? Does it feel very specific? Hmm. Okay, uh, give me an arcana check, uh, Noggins. Why are you doing this to me? Sorry, <laughs> and as Merelda, if you can also give me an arcana check. Okay. Uh, since I'm actively doing something, I'm going to guidance this as well because there's no way. It's none. Mm. I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it here. It's there. Uh, well, 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 well. Hey, it's not one. Uh, sixteen. Sixteen. Um, that's good for me. It feels a little like dark fey magic. Dark fey magic. Yeah. And Esmeralda, what did you roll? I rolled a nine. Okay. I'm gonna say, um, with a nine. You don't necessarily know for sure, but you do know that ha that night hags specifically are fiends, not fey. Mm. Being a monster hunter. Oh, okay. So fiends would probably be your better bet. Gotcha. Okay. I sure. thought I was I was Nora was mistaken, but Esmeralda yeah. <laughs> let Esmeralda know. Yeah. Sometimes so your characters know more than you do. Say that. I have that spell. Uh, you can technically choose more than one type of creature. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I thought you um, had to pick one. No. It's protected against... Actually, I'm sorry. You don't protect. You don't choose. You're protected against these type of creatures. It is not a choice. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, okay. I thought I had to uh, choose one of them. Per wording of the spell. Uh, anywho, but I do say... Oh, I'll link it here. You can, you can read it. Um, no, you're uh, right. It doesn't say to choose one of them. Okay. Yeah. It just says you're protected it's against these types. Against certain types. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You imagine you're um, covered with what's, yeah. Yeah. Then this is, it tastes familiar, but corrupted or just darkened. Just be careful. There wasn't there a coven other than, or like the one who hurt me and, and Falfer. I don't know their name. Morgantha was one. Yeah, but she's a night hag. Yes. That's a little different. This still feels fey. There were others, right? Were they night hags too? She had a daughter, a night hag. We killed one of the three to remain. Huh. Okay, well, just be careful, because now I don't think this is Falfer's doing. I think this might be not a trap, but maybe they call this place home now. But why? Why? Why all of the Muskoka effigies? Did they like Muskoka? Maybe they were a fan of the Dawnbringers, too. Then why do they plague us? I recall if it, if it weren't for Muskoka's spell of silence, we wouldn't have stood a chance against them. Right. You watch, Sterling, all of a sudden as your father begins to lower into the water, slowly, until his head, bloop, bloop, and all you see is bubbles, and then it goes still. He's singing. He's sinking. There's nobody I should there, go and Sterling. help. There's nobody there. Give me a perception check, Sterling. Uh, 
19. You're pretty sure that it's your mind playing tricks on you. That it's not actually your father. And maybe it's the amalgam convincing you of such, but... You're right. I know. We are right. We are all right. And you're all right. Don't worry. It's done now. Um, maybe we should keep going. We won't find out much right here. Agreed. Okay. I do keep my scythe out, though. Okay. He's a little on it. Right. As you approach further and further, that cloud continues to be thick, and it thickens. As eventually you come into that land bridge that leads to where Baba Lasaga's cottage used to stand, and you see the ashen remains as feelings of loss and triumph and all of this mix of emotions continues. You see the burned out husk of Baba's head. Oh, did we lose somebody? Rat, no, who do we lose? Maybe we're just rearranged. Well, I'm not there, but I'm still here. So that's kind of weird. I don't know what happened. We'll figure it out. Very, mm. very Muskoka. Um, as you approach, you notice the burnt out husk of Baba's head still on the stake out in front of the cottage. And you see what appears to be the remains of the funeral pyre that you had erected for Muskoka. And you can tell that it's quite, there's a different air here than there was before. but there's a, a weird, clear silence. As you look on, you see a form motionless at the base of the funeral pyre. It's him. Over there. I'll, I'll run up to him. Okay. Quickly. Yes, same. As you mm -hmm. run, you approach what appears to be Falfer's body, lying motionless. Okay, can I, can I check to see if he's alive? As you approach, give me a medicine check and a perception check. That's seven for medicine and 21 for perception. As you run up, Immediately, you're convinced it's Falfer, you can tell by the size of his body. But as you approach, there is something distinctly different about him. His skin appears to be a pale color of purple, washed out. His ears, as you approach, you can see that they've split into points on both sides almost like they've been split in half. And upon his head is this living crown, almost like garland-like, yes! with horns that protrude from his temples and up along his head. And he lies motionless, naked, on a pile of his belongings. Can Muskoka see what's? Can Muskoka see the party jo coming? Muskoka is no longer there. What? Where did I go? <laughs> okay. Is? Are you sure that's him? It's undoubtedly Falfer, but different. And you can it's... see, even with your low medicine roll, because you had a high perception. You can walk, you can see his chest rising and falling as he breathes, seemingly sleeping. He's, he's turned colored. He's too cold. Let's put some clothing on him. Yes, Adam. Why is his clothing off? 
<laughs> this is not normal. It's so so I, I'm staring at this. Yeah. Sorry, this is Omega not trying to meta, but also acknowledging that Noggins is what he is. I can tell that obviously something's different, but this nature check is advantage. Very familiar. Okay. <laughs> um, guiding makes myself still because no. Uh, what am I doing? Like advantage. I need it. Oh, you said nature. Oh, good. Thank God. Uh, advantage. Okay. That was not an advantage, but that's still a 20 on the first row. Natural 20. Oh, very nice. When you step up on Falfer's position, you immediately know what has happened. You are very aware that in the Fey world, when a being makes a deal with a hag, their countenance and their physical presence and makeup change for the duration of that deal. Falfer. You're no longer a halfling. You are now what is known as a hexblood. And that is where we're going to take our break for this evening. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome to Dwarven Forge. This is everything you need to know about our terrain in 60 seconds. Ready? Let's go. We hand sculpt our pieces for maximum detail and artistry, infusing passion into every millimeter of our work. Everything is available beautifully hand painted so you can start playing right away. Or you can choose unpainted to paint everything yourself. Our pieces are completely modular so you can use the same sets to create a new adventure every time. Most pieces have embedded anchor magnets that affix to our terrain trays for secure building and for revealing rooms as your players discover them. We create everything out of Dwarvenite, our top secret PVC formula that's nearly indestructible. We pack our pieces with as many features as possible, such as swappable LEDs to quickly change the look of your scene. We offer magnetic accessories to add flavor or increase the danger. A one-inch tactical grid is sculpted into our floors, hidden in dungeon flagstones, natural rocks, or sticks and plants. In addition to sculpted pieces, we make terrain trays to use as a vibrant graphic base for your build. We offer a range of environments, including dungeons, caverns, cities, castles, sewers, forests, mountains, streets, burrows, ice, and hellscape. And that's just the beginning. We have a passionate fan base who can tell you all about it. And that's everything you need to know about Dwarven Forge in 60 seconds. The games we play are the stories we create. The fortress doors swing open. Every story is unique. And the sound of war drums rises. Sometimes our stories come to us when we least expect them. We need to be ready no matter where inspiration strikes. And sometimes our stories are told over great distances. No matter where your journey leads you or how your story is told. The games we play are the stories we create. Cyrus Cape can help make yours epic. 
Sirenscape is searchable, fast, and customizable from any device with no need to pre-install any sound. Adding epic atmosphere to your game has never been easier.
And we're back. You all stand over Falfer in this form. Omega, you obviously having kind of realized what may have happened to him. What do you all do? Noggins is staring a very blank expression, a very stuck blank expression, as if he is looking at something he has seen time and time again. I, I rolled an 18 perception. Do I notice this from Noggins? Uh, yeah, I would say. Unless you're trying to hide it, Noggins. Uh-uh. Yeah, no. I don't think he's realized he's clearly, doing it. You can tell huh. he's clearly perturbed. Noggins, what, what is it? You look disturbed. What's wrong? I don't say anything. I just walk over to Falfer okay. and try to wake him up. Okay. Is um, his state anything that's familiar to me with everything I've read? Nature check. Eleven. Um, I would say with an eleven, um, his, um, it appears to be some sort of, uh, curse of some sort. You've heard of stories, um, of people's, a, a person's race changing, um, in an instant, um, and you're not quite sure what has caused it but you can tell it's not good. How do you plan to wake him up, Noggins? I'm going to try to just pump one uh, balm of the summer court into him. Okay. The light just kind of flowing down into their, into their form, just like he's breathing, but let me make sure he's okay. Okay. As you do that, Falfer, you feel a tingle that brings you back and he jolts awake. And Falfer, you wake up from this horrible nightmare um, of you basically being marionetted, a marionette. Mm. Um, and you watch yourself kind of <clears throat> dancing across the stage and you can't control your body as you do. More like in sync, but um, anyways. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> But as you, it's gonna be May, no. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Okay. Uh, anyways, Mary, I just ruined the whole horror aspect. You did. Anyways, Thanks. Be marionetted, <laughs> and out of uh, a page of Wes Craven, um, you, the strings are your veins that are coming out of your wrists and leading up. Mm. And as you're in this nightmare, you look up and you see Morgantha, your veins tied around each finger, moving you to her, and then you wake up. And as you wake, Falfer lets out this blood-curdling scream, and as you look up, you see yeah. Noggins. The first thing you feel, Falfer, is um, you kind of look around a little bit, and you feel fairly the same, except there is a weight on your head that is unfamiliar. And as you look into the dark recesses and the shadows around where you are, um, you can see into the darkness, but it feels, it feels different somehow. It feels almost more natural, like it's innate, rather than almost learned through years of training. What do you do? I, uh, <clears throat> so I, I jolt up. Do I see them here, there? Yeah. You see everyone I'm around you. Right in front of you. And you are uh, I, so I, buck naked. I see Noggins. Grab his pants for him. I'll I'll uh, I'll see my pile of clothing there and uh and be like uh oh, uh oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. I'll grab grab the things and put them on. And then as I'm reaching for my clothes, is my skin a different color? You see that your skin is a different color. So as I'm reaching for my clothes and I see my skin a different color, I grab the, my clothes and I'm like, uh, uh, what, uh, how it, What did you do? What the hell, Falfer? I don't understand. Someone, 
uh, anyone, a mirror, uh, 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 a dagger, or something. I pull Here. out my dagger. My reflection. And I look, I look at myself in the dagger. And I say, what the? How did. What did you do? We have no what idea how long you've been exposed for. Perhaps warming you up would cause the skin, the color to return to your skin. No. No! Alfred. Like, he's cold. He's... No. What is. What do you mean? What. How did this. And I. And, and I. I start realizing. It must be. It must be Morgantha. It must be the hags. What? what have they done? And, uh, and I'll. Yeah. And as, as you all look at Falfer for the first time, as he's awake now, you see that the pupils of his eye, or the irises of his eyes are bright purple. What? I, I have a proper yes. mirror in my bag. I, I, I will take it out and I slowly like hand it to him. I'll, and then I'll grab back. it from Travas and, and, and look at it and just like, <gasps> Noggins. What is going on? What? What is this? Hey, really quickly, was it obvious that Esmeralda cast her spell on Sterling? Sorry, was it what, sir? Was it obvious? Was it obvious that uh, Esmeralda cast her spell on Sterling? Yeah, she didn't say she hit, hit it. But it does take, like, a, it's a vocal spell. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm making sure I know. Yep. Yeah. Do you want to know? What happened to you, Falf? You, Noggins, you know what happened? I'm oh, very, very, very aware of what happened to you. Then, then, yes, please, would you, would you let me know? No, do me a favor. Can you try to hit Sterling for me? Try your hardest. Uh, what do you, what do you, what do you try mean? Try your hardest to hit Sterling. Yeah. I look at Sterling and go, uh, are you, sh are you sure? He'll be fine. And I'll, uh, I'll go over to Sterling and, and, uh, I'm assuming I'm the same height, Jay? Yeah, you're the same height as you were, yeah. Okay. Still small. Um, so I'll, I'll walk over to Sterling and kind of slap his knee, kind of like a, as, as I'm, as I'm putting my pants and the rest of my clothing on, I'll walk yeah. over and kind of uh, slap, yeah, slap his knee. Yeah. Mechanically, he has disadvantage on this yes. attack roll. Yeah, give me a disadvantage mm -hmm. on the attack. Okay. Um, but I do not, uh... You notice it's a little harder to hit him, right? Just a what's tad bit. What's going on here? Yes. I'm... You tell us you're the one that wandered off in the middle of the night and we're all worried about you. <laughs> I do I do remember I do remember that part. Uh, Alpha, we've we followed your tracks all the way here. I was uh, I was given an Yes. I was given a note and a and a small vial. And I was told if I followed, uh that I would have and 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 poured this uh, this oil on my body uh, near where Morgantha was, then then I would somehow be able to save us. And so I I had I had to do it. I had to leave the camp and come to uh, come here. And now this and I'm kind of confused. You made a deal. At the same time. You made there a again. deal with a hag. Uh, without even telling us. It's true. For the first time, Noggins, you haven't noticed it because of everything that's been going on, but you feel back to your old self. That weakened state is no longer apparent for you as well, Falfer. You are back up to your hit point maximum. All right. <laughs> Both of you. I'm a totally different race. Fair enough. What has happened here? When what you make a deal here? with a hag, be it a a hag who still remains fey or even one that gets darker, when you do such a thing, your body becomes one with them. You take on some of their characteristics. 
No, 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 no. That's not that's not what she told me. I specifically asked her, what's the downside? And she said, nothing. She said, there's no downside. So that cannot be true. Not really a downside. It just means you're better in their eyes. So no, she didn't technically lie. Uh, you, you made a deal, Falfa, with the hags? What did so, they so promise that, you? Sterling, I mean, Dimitri, so, so I could protect you. So I, so that the, the curses would be gone and the hags would leave us alone. I had to, uh, I came and I burst through the door. And then, uh, with no help whatsoever from Muskoka's ghost, I ran through the door. What? And then I, I attacked the first one and then the second one, but then I noticed the green one in the back. And then wait, she- wait, wait. Green? Yeah, I wonder, are we going to just skip over that part where we talked about Muskoka? Who's? Oh. He's but they said he was not there. <laughs> <laughs> Muskoka's right. ghost. I, I came here to pay my final respects as well. And so as, as part of the ritual, uh, I, I, I took all of my clothing off, and, uh, the, the and I, I lit prostrate uh, over my friend's ashes as a, as a sign of uh, a respect for his life. Is it's it's something we do, do in Dark Dawn, where I'm from. Ah, oh, I see. Uh, and it's, it's a cultural difference <laughs> that you may not understand, and neither of does <laughs> Balfour, do but... you realize the severity of what you just did? Do you understand that you're never going to be what you are before? If you understand that, then I'm not mad. I, I, I'm disappointed, but I'm not mad. But I, I had no no clue this would be the results. I was yeah. You went to a bo- a group of hacks. It seems like they're a coven now. You went to them expecting what? Well, I'm only I'm, asking because it seems like we have not learned from what just happened. And if we're going to fight Strahd and do what we have to do, it would be nice for us to make these decisions together, even if it's something you have to do by yourself. Because now geez. you're Fae, like me, and you're probably never going to be what you were before. Just in case you aren't aware of that. But even if you were aware of that and you willingly did it, you still went off in the middle of the night without telling us. That was so reckless. Powerful. I is... thought that we were, I thought whatever happened to no more secrets. Yes, exactly. Uh, but, but, I mean, this wasn't really a secret. I did not, uh, I was, I did not even have the chance to hide it from you. I simply left the camp. Um, n- no, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I could have woken you up, but I did not want to put you in danger. I, I knew that I was the reason and the, 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 the cause of so much of this trouble. I did not simply want to lay it on you as my friends. I just sure. wanted to take care of it on my own. But you have us because you don't have to do that anymore. You don't have to take this thing on on your own. That was, it's the whole point of us being together, is that we don't have to do that. But every t- every time, it seems, every single time I, I attempt to do something right, something wrong goes terribly, uh, something goes terribly wrong. <laughs> and, and so I, if I could just do this one thing to earn my place, in the group, I, I, I you already you had already a place in the were. group, but Muskoka is gone because of me, and and I, I simply, I, I really wanted to, to show you that I, 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 I uh, appreciated all of you and did not want to put you in harm's way. The hags, they were terrible. I mean. They were terrible. And I look at my at my hands and pull the mirror back to my face. And I'll, and I'll say to them, 
And if if the worst part of all of this is that I have to deal with a little bit of change and some differences in how I feel, then for you, it was all worth it. That That's all well and good, but it's, it seems like you're missing something. Was there some sort of deal struck with the hags? What did they say to you? Uh, let me explain. So after after I defeated them one by one, and they were on the ground, they... Can I roll an insight uh, check? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I was waiting for that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm doing network guidance. 22. Too. No. Uh, <laughs> that's a lie. I want to see the D&D. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it's 20 a, for Go ahead. 25. 21 for me. Okay. <laughs> I rolled over 20. <laughs> You guys know absolutely there's no way that Naked Falfer <laughs> killed three hags. You, yeah, you killed three hags naked. All right. Okay, 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 uh, okay, No fine. more secrets. Did you frighten them? <laughs> I, I was being, um, they had a, a pile of pies on the table. And I could not resist them, Dimitri. I could not resist and so, after all this, you still took a bite. I, I went pie. over to the table. Please let me continue. And and with uh, Muskoka's prompting, um, <laughs> you can tell he's lying again. <laughs> Falfer. No, no, no. Fair enough. Okay, fine. Without Muskoka's prompting, I meant without Muskoka's prompting, I. Uh, uh, I had these pies, which were delicious, but different. And then uh, Morgantha, who was still fine, I did not defeat her, uh, stood there and gave me an opportunity to protect you all through a, a deal that she presented me. The deal was this, that if I, if we pursued Strahd, uh, in a continuous fashion until his defeat, then she would reveal to us the secrets of entrance into the Ravenloft castle undetected. That uh, she would remove all of the curse from myself and from Noggins. Uh, but then I told her, I said, <laughs> but there's no downside here. It's too good to be true. And she said, no downside. So I'm still a little bit confused, but I'll give it to her. She was not lying, I guess, depends on, uh, I do not know what this means for me, okay? I'm a totally changed being. I have no clue what it means. And Noggins is telling me that he knows more, so it's probably going to lead to some very lengthy conversations about my future. Were you even in your right mind when you struck this deal? You were just taking a bite of the pie. You remember what they make the with, right? Oh, but uh, uh, the, the flavor was totally different. What? <laughs> Did you see Muskoka before or after the pie? That is a good question. So when I came here at first and lay on the pyre, um, he, he made himself known to me through the form of a ghost and and it was then that I had a friend to talk all of this through with and through conversation and some encouragement, I convinced him that it was a good idea for us to confer with the hags and do a deal. Can I insight check that? <laughs> Me- Mexico? was on board with this plan? Ooh, nat 20 for 23. You believe him. Oh! He's telling the truth. Gosh! You were telling the truth there, right? Like, yeah, you, you talked to him, yeah, you talked Muskoka into it, and he kind of finally agreed, yeah. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, in the end, Muskoka and I both approached the pies. We both walked into the hut. And we both uh, were aware of the deal that was happening. And I was able to say a final goodbye to my friend. It was awkward. <laughs> it was like an, a one-minute goodbye, and then like a nine-minute 
naked handshake, which is not something I advise for any departure. Um, um, did did he did he seem okay? You know, considering. Uh, truthfully, it was a very. Uh, it was like a final adventure with a friend, and hmm. uh, and I. It was the closure that I needed. Um, I was able to say goodbye, and he was able as well to say goodbye. And then there was the strange handshake. But it was very good. I have another question for you. Did By she means? give you the secrets to enter Stroud's castle? Haha! <laughs> See, this is the strange thing. Um... I forgot to ask about the secrets, but I'm assuming that my new form uh, somehow gives me all of the information that I need. That's she said not that how she, it works. She said that she that you she would be a voice in, when you are ready to enter Castle Ravenloft. That she yes, will be a right. voice in your ear and a guide when you go. Yes, I, I did not have a writing implement to write down notes because I was at the moment naked, but I do seem yes. to recall that she mentioned that when I needed her, that she would make herself available uh, to answer those questions. Well, at least there's one good thing in your favor right now, since the deal has been struck. Thankfully, she won't go back on her word. And you know this to be true for sure? Hi, I'm from the Feywild. I know how deals work. Uh, are hags known to be truthful? No, but the deal was struck. Ah. Well, my next question would be, why would the hags want us to defeat Strahd? I asked the very same question, Dimitri. Yes? I, I did. I, I said, wait a moment. Why are you bad? Strahd is bad. And if, if why is it that if we continue to go after Strahd that you, uh, you make strange allies with us like this? And they said they also want to go home. They are also captor, captors. They are also captive of Strads. So, oh. uh, I mean, now we have new uh, allies. Pretty good, huh? Hmm. Strange yes. allies. Can we really sleep night if we know that we've released a number of hags on the rest of the world? Well... Did the we deal. ever really have them? The what were place? the exact conditions of the deal? That we I mean, would. Can, need we to can. Pursue. We can still pursue the hags, can we not? We can still <laughs> fight them. Well, stop them. There, there is this one. There was this one simple caveat uh, that she mentioned, <laughs> kind of way end in the bottom of the paperwork. <laughs> what she said, <laughs> this tiny thing where she said that we must not pursue them anymore but but the good thing is that as long as we are chasing Strahd they stay away from us so it's like a it's like a win-win so this does not apply only to you it applies to us all uh I mean I, I can only speak for myself uh wait actually I think I may have spoken for all of you, <laughs> yes, you... look you did on behalf of all of us, you said we wouldn't in order if, to complete the If the Vistani could heal, still hunt them, the Vistani could still do it. But if you've made they a struck pact, a deal with us and not the Vistani. If you've made a pact with them, most likely they won't need to be seen anymore. Most likely they want us to be their instruments to fighting Strahd or trying to take out Strahd. It's not the best win-win situation right now, but it's done. Hmm. We're all I mean, making it so very move. complicated. All you need to do is keep the fires going at night. Listen, I, I hate to say this, but I think we should stay focused on defeating Strahd, and if there is one more person 
that will <clears throat> not stand in our way, then so be it. <clears throat> hey, Jay. And just, just so I'm understanding, I don't want to like take something away from you just to make sure. I know what hex bloods can do and can't do, correct? Um, I mean, with what you rolled, I would say yes. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know the inner workings of it. I'm not one, but being of that and being what I am, I guess assume that I have a good inkling. I'll be able to help Falfer with Possibly. this new. Okay. Yeah. yeah somewhat. Um, I mean, you wouldn't understand somewhat. the exact abilities yeah. and, and what each thing <clears throat> that they can do does. Um, Valid. But you absolutely that. know, because, yeah, we had checked if you knew what had happened to him and what caused it. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah. yeah. Okay. You've probably uh, met a couple hex bloods in your time, and you've probably yeah. seen them do a couple things, but. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, I, don't, I wouldn't know how it all works, but I'm sure I've seen one or two, sure. a couple. I've seen one, not necessarily made, but I know yeah. what has happened. Um, cool. I just say. <sighs> how about we. Um, <clears throat> Go back to Gagas, to the camp, um, reconvene. Um, I don't have all of the answers, Falfer, but luckily I do have some, and I can help. Hey. But please, and he looks at everyone. Can we not make decisions without others knowing? I know we want to have that moment of, I have to do it alone. I have to be the hero. From what I'm understanding, there are no heroes in Barovia, as I echo what Esmeralda said before. <laughs> I'm going to do my absolute best to uh, perform my duties as a party member, and if sometimes my impulses lead me astray, I will simply have to uh, uh, do more restitution. Yes. No. Falfer, how would you like us to explain when we get back to camp, and obviously everybody else takes a look at you? How would you like us to explain what happened? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, I would say uh, perhaps we uh, perhaps we tell them that the hags had uh, ill intentions with me and uh, have done this to me. I mean, we are facing monsters all the time. I suspect we all have different kinds of scars. Uh, you, Esmeralda, you have your leg. Uh, Sterling, he has a, a, is one of seven inside of him. You know, we all have we all have different things. Travis is quite dumb. Um, for others, Dimitri is is handsome and tall. We all have things we have to bear. Uh, I will I will learn to bear mine. Um, also, Falfer, you do. Um, as you, you kind of process, um, you do sense that you have the ability to disguise yourself like you did not before. So better than I did before? Yes. Um, as part of hex blood, as part of the hex magic that exists, you can cast disguise self once per long rest, and you can also cast it using your spell slots. Okay, that makes sense. And I, I, I admit, I didn't have disguise self before. That's another campaign. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. Awesome. Now, my my friend, we've questioned you significantly, but how do you feel? Are you okay? You've been through a lot. Yes. Does this new form put you at any sort of disadvantage? What's what's, what's it <laughs> I mean, all about? I do not, I, 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 honestly, I have no clue. I, I mean, I seem, it seems like I can move a little bit more swiftly. Uh, and for the record, that's 30 feet of movement instead of 25, which is good, an extra five. Um, and uh, and it seems that uh, perhaps my eyesight has changed uh, ever so slightly. Um, other than that, I, I, I'm I not sure, my friend. Uh, Dimitri, I, I appreciate the question and Sterling as well. I think I will, uh, I will just have to learn, I guess. Okay. <sighs> 
We'll talk about it. Let's not worry about it right now. You want to ride in the harness on the way back? Oh, can I please? I would be. Yes. That would be very great. And Noggins, uh, a, a sincere thank you for your wisdom. Um, seems I will be leaning on you for, for more of it. You can tell the look that he gives you is I'm going to regret every ounce of this. Thank you, my new friend. <sighs> I'm still a little disappointed that you ate some of the pie, but I think, I think we've grown a little in this experience, and um, I think we have found some, some newfound courage as well. Mm. Um, yeah, climbing into the uh, into the harness on Sterling, I'll point myself back out on Sterling's back, like so that I can see Dimitri behind him, and uh, you know, and and I'll just say, uh, Dimitri. I, I don't know how to say it, but uh, these last moments with uh, with Muskoka, in I, I, I really needed them. Um, it 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 opened my eyes, and and I uh, I really needed that. So, although I disappointed you by leaving, and by eating that pie, uh, it was a shared moment with him that I will never forget. All right. I'm I'm glad you had your closure. Also glad you have your clothes back. Well, I'm glad you have your clothes on. <laughs> you should never go to where I'm from. Everyone's naked. It's kind no, of it's a, it's a different thing if everybody does it. That's true. <laughs> it is very different. All right. Where do you all head? Back to Gacus. <laughs> I say at least back to Gacus personally. We can go from there. Okay. And I will say yeah. right before, as we're starting to head out, Noggins will just walk over to the pyre and place his hand over it. And that same dark red flower, which striations will appear mm. um, as he leaves the Muskoka's heart behind. And they continue to go. The boss will go and take the little effigy and lay it down uh, on the ashes. Uh, but I'm going to cut another one down from the tree on the way out. Okay. All right. As you leave the area, that feeling starts to subside after some time. Um, you arrive just outside the Gacchus gates, through the Gacchus foothills heading south, um, just an hour out of sunset, you imagine, as the, you know, the cloudy sky begins to dim and darken. Um, how do you approach the gates? And is there anything you want to do before you enter Gacchus? I'm going to self-consciously, uh, Jay, I'm going to roll my sleeves back down over my hands and pull my tunic over my head and just, uh, yeah, try to... Your hood, you mean? Cover like, up like his cloak? Yeah, the, okay. the cloak, not my tunic, my cloak. Okay. Or my head, and, and yeah, try to hide myself as best okay. I can. Right. Give me um. Give me a deception check, or performance. I'll say okay. performance check. Sure. Performance. Anyone else? Anything? That's a nineteen, Jason. Okay. You think you've effectively done so? I'll uh, I'll walk close to because right now you're sort of slung behind Sterling's back, right? Mm. So I'll walk close to you so that it just sort of closes the gap and limits visibility. Okay. Um, I nod in acceptance of the help. Okay. All right. As you all approach the gates, um, you notice that there is a elevated sense of awareness uh, amongst the towers. And as you cross through and as they let you in, um, you see that the camp is bustling. Um, and quite active. And as you make your way through camp, you end up speaking to some people and you find out that they are taking action to the information that you had given them. And in a day or two, they plan to vacate Gacchus. They are going to leave it to the Dusk Elves who are currently taking up residence with them. And they are going to move 
north to the Fastana grounds temporarily until they can establish new camps on the east and the west border in the attempt of gathering for forces as people come through the mists at the gates of Barovia to try and gather them to the cause and to somewhat disperse the large target that is Gacchus. Um, it also puts them more central to Barovia strategically. Um, it does appear that the majority of them are, are, are quite down about it, upset, concerned, um, having to split their numbers is not, you know, great. They don't necessarily know at this point how it's going to be split or who's going to be where. Um, they just got the news and they're starting to kind of prepare for that in the next couple of days. Do they seem concerned that they're kind of leaving themselves open as they travel now because they no longer have a palisade or any defenses as they move? Um, yeah, I mean, there is some concern, absolutely. Um, and the Fistana grounds aren't guarded. There is no palisade at the Fistana grounds. Um, so absolutely, there's some, like, what's going to happen? Will we be able to build the defenses at the new camps? That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a lot of unknowns right now from them. Uh, and they say that, uh, you know, it was that Madame Eva had come that evening and it was quite cryptic in what she said, but that she spread the information and gave them just what they needed to hear regarding splitting camps and that more information would follow. Okay. Jay. Yep. I, uh, when I was in the, in the discord in Gacchus, mm. uh, before I joined the party, yeah. I commissioned a series of gifts to be made for the Dawnbringers. Okay. Um, and I've got the description from, uh, from those that helped, <laughs> uh, if I can, if I can read yeah. it for everybody. Yeah. Are you giving them the gifts at this point? Yeah. So they were, uh, they were, uh, in a basket, um, near where, uh, sorry, I'm trying to read where, where she left them. It would have been at the sure. Dawnbringer camp, uh, with my name on it. Okay. So as you, as you um, all kind of, uh, get back to where you had been camped, things were kind of left as they were, nothing has changed. As you approach, you see a bundle with your name on it. Yeah. So I'll go over and, uh, and I open it up. There's a, there's a letter, uh, inside, uh, from Lorelei from Ludari, uh, who, I, who I'd asked to, to kind of make this, and she went and got a bunch of help to, to do it all. Um, it says, I hope you're traveling with the Dawnbringers, or this will be a little awkward. We did make a few tweaks on the way, uh, but I hope you're, they're up to your standards. I know I know you wanted gifts for the Dawnbringers, but I can't very well let a member of my own clan go without, can I? Yeah, there's a little smiley face. Uh, I'm, I may have organized this, but it was only with the hard work of the other crafters that this is finished. So thanks go to Peter uh, Calderash and Oskler of Waddleby, Malachi of Barbanegra, Tyel of Guaril, Guaril, and Morgan of Ludari. Uh, so I'll, inside, uh, one is... Um, there's... Uh, <laughs> I don't know which order to do this in. Um, there's a, there's a bag with a red ribbon with an S uh, uh, carved on, on one of the pieces of wood. And inside is a, is a large wooden serving spoon, like an oversized wooden spoon with an S carved on it, uh, which I give to Sterling. Uh, because knowing that he was a giant, I thought it was probably very hard for him to eat <laughs> with the regular utensils. So I got them to make him a very large uh, spoon. Uh, there's a simple woven bag. Um, uh, good quality sorry, were, were, were these gifts made before you met the Dawnbringers? Like when you were role yes. playing in the Discord when nobody knew it was you? Yeah, so I asked so I asked them to, to make these and they only finished it because they had to actually go and like collect the resources sure. and do crafting. Yeah. It, it took them like like a couple of weeks <laughs> yeah. to actually do it. So at that point, I joined the Dawnbringers. Yeah, great. Um, so simple woven bag. Uh, uh, there's a D embroidered on the front which is for uh, Dimitri. Um, inside, there's a, an intricately carved comb in the shape of a dragon for his long, uh, beautiful hair. Uh, the handle forming the head of the creature uh, with the dragon scales etched down the length of the entire comb, the body of the dragon takes up where the comb teeth are. 
uh, with the larger end tooth forming the dragon tail. So basically, it's a it's a dragon shaped comb, comb. Uh, for his hair. And I'll send you the full description. Um, for for Falfer, there's a dark gray cloth with an F embroidered in green, and inside are are heavy uh, ear muffs covered in wolf wolf fur. Uh, which I got them to make because uh, I didn't want him to hurt himself with the power of his voice. <laughs> That's coming uh, now. <laughs> uh, who, who are we left with? Sorry, Noggins, uh, you weren't there. Uh, and then That's Esmeralda. <laughs> Esmeralda, uh, who was uh, or is his his hero. Uh, small cloth uh, drawstring bag. Uh, woven into the cloth is a subtle moon pattern and embroidered on the bag uh, is a scroll work E. Uh, inside there's a necklace. It's short enough to not get in the way of fighting, um, but long enough to not choke the wearer. It's important that they noted that. Uh, <laughs> there's a single ruby pendant encased in a silver cage on a silver chain. Uh, engraved on the cage is the phrase to honor those that sacrificed for those they love. And on the back of the ruby is a silver lightning bolt. Uh, and then they also, they left one for me with a T, which is, was awesome. It gets to the bottom and there's one more, uh, a dark leather belt with sheaths for two daggers. It's black uh, with a subtle swirl of gray worked into the coloring for the whole thing. And a ribbon loosely tied around it marked with a, with a T. So, so uh, sorry, Noggins, I did not know you would be with us. Uh, but I had the the camp make these items for my heroes. There, this is a very useful. I'll reach into the bag and cover my now split ears with the permanent <laughs> new headset or he earmuffs. Oh, that's so great! And and just for those of you at home, this the Discord real people on the Discord playing their characters crafted these items. I didn't even know about this. Crafted these items over the last couple yeah. of weeks using their crafting rolls every day in order to deliver these items. Yes. So cool. So lots of all thanks to Lorelai means, who, who did it all. this means is y'all need to make something for Noggins now too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Any so requests, them. Noggins? <laughs> mm, surprise me. I'm kidding. <laughs> Great. If it was Travas, if Travas had heard about Noggins, uh, I probably would have gotten him uh, some like uh, big cork caps for the top of the horns so he didn't accidentally hurt anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Safety don't first, worry. Noggins. Even Safety though I first. can attack with my horns, I almost deal negative damage, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. So you I'll all... send the party all, all uh, dis uh, descriptions. Of your items. That's awesome. Awesome, thanks. Okay. And so he hands yeah. out all these items, okay. and there's, again, a sense of warmth amongst you as you begin to set a fire and settle in uh, for the evening. Um, the understanding being that they're going to start to disassemble the camp over the next couple days, and it's kind of inferred that maybe you all should move on in the morning. You settle in um, for the evening. Is there anything you want to do before? Really, hold on, really quickly for clarity. Are we not... Could we... In the letter that we got that's in our camp from Jordani, it did say that the Dust Elves were respecting that we had a camp here and we can come back and, and, and come back if as needed is that still a thing or are they now saying you probably don't want to be here at all and we also still have yeah. argon sold obviously yeah, yeah but i mean you could absolutely you could absolutely visit gakis later the the, yeah, the yeah. dusk elves it's just their home now um gotcha. it's off the beaten path so uh for whatever reason yes. if, if you need somewhere but yeah i mean you you helped yeah. free the dusk elves from their current scenario so mm -hmm. uh there's absolutely no reason why you wouldn't want to come back yeah yeah okay Perhaps. i was curious yep. uh cool all right anything else you anyone wants to do before you settle in for the evening uh we did have one thing that was given to us as well uh from nobody uh so they gave us uh five alchemist fire um crossbow bolts and five acid crossbow bolts Cool. 
which do an additional 1d4 of the damage type. That's awesome. So we can distribute as needed. Okay. Um, and there was a couple days in there, in, in Gakis. I know some of you role-played on the Discord during that time. Is there anything that you did in between now and when you arrived in Gakis that you want to tell us about? Or I don't know if there is anything there. Did I... I'm trying to remember. Cause I did role-playing with Nagas, but did I do... No. It would have been... It would have been before the Festana camp. Yes, during that time, uh, Noggins did get uh, something for Dimitri from uh, Sario, I believe. Uh, get you a potion of fire breathing. Oh. Cool. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. There was one more item in there as well. <clears throat> which was a, a small palm-sized soft pillow uh, painted in various or in varying shades of gray to look like a rock. And on the top it is detailed sun embroidery. Uh, and on the bottom is embroidered a red and white checkered M. Uh, and that was supposed to be for Muskoka, who, of course, Travas didn't realize uh, was dead at that point. Um, and it was shaped like a rock because... <laughs> He he was kicking rocks with uh, with some of the people from the camp, uh, and that was kind of the rumor that was that that Travas made was that he was he was so strong he could kick a boulder, so I made one that was a pillow. So Travas will just keep that and he'll just tuck that into his bag, um, and kind of remember the uh, that uh, even though he was like this hero, uh, he was still a little soft and squishy like a pillow, I guess. Aww. Mm hmm. And now he's dead. Continue. Um, <laughs> you're just upset because I wanted to eat you. <laughs> yeah. What were we saying, Esmeralda? Uh, I will say before we leave, um, Esmeralda would have uh, left a wax-sealed letter with the elders who are continuing on. And the letter is left for should they come across Van Richten, it's a sealed letter for him, and upon opening it, it would say, don't come back looking for me, and with my name signed at the bottom. Wow. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. It's a nice, not to, like, push forward, um, I assume we're going to, after tonight, at least go back to Argenvosthold and be that, that's home versus Gakkes. Yeah, that's mm. up to you guys. Yeah. yeah, and, and we yeah. should bring the Vardo that has uh, the treasures yes. that I uh, acquired. Yeah. I mean, at this point, as you all, I'm assuming if we settle in um, mm -hmm. to sleep, um, you have a long rest, so you can add that to your character sheet. Um, How does my rest go, Jay? Awesomely, actually. <laughs> yes. Like, the best rest you've had your mind clear, no fear of interruptions from any sort of situation. Uh, um, love it. Um, during the evening, I just want to break in this calm a little. Okay. Just spend just a few minutes. Just I like it. Yeah, it's been a couple of weeks since you brushed your hair, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. All right, you all rest for the evening. Um, you have a very good. Um, restful sleep. Mm. You wake, of course, uh, maybe a little later after being weary and just allowing yourselves to kind of enjoy. And you hear, obviously, the early morning music that exists in the camp. Um, again, there's purpose in the camp, but they are still the gracious Vistani um, that they are. Um, as you wake, you have the day ahead of you. Um, I'm assuming you start a fire, you have some breakfast um, from the uh, wolf's bane, um, probably your last meal here at Gakis, as you kind of enjoy the ambiance. As you sit around the fire, Falfer, um, you have this weird sensation in 
your index fingernail. You feel a tingling. Um, hmm. And you get this sensation that it's loose. Okay, I will I will investigate my index finger's nail. Yeah. It doesn't take much, but as you pull, it starts to come out without any uh. resistance. <laughs> I just like so I I I pull it out. Yep. And I, I look around and uh can I can I attempt to to fit it back in? Yeah, so as soon as you pull it out, you feel that there's this kind of almost electric magic that surrounds it. Huh. And it's just the bed nail under it, as if, you know, you had lost your nail and it fell off. Yeah. And you hold it in your hand, and you get this sense that you can actually give this to someone. And you can either use it to send telepathic messages, or you can place it somewhere to view the surroundings. It, like a like an wow like an eye like a camera yeah like you can you can go into a trance and you can see and hear through it for the for the duration of a long rest what I love hags now um, um. and or as an action you can uh, send a telepathic message to a creature holding it or carrying it uh, and you and you can do it as a bonus action so um <laughs> Wow, that's that, is, that is unbelievable. Okay, uh, who's who's sitting next to me? Like, who's around me? Uh, all of everybody kind of hanging out at the fire, starting uh, to pack okay. their bags. Yeah. Just okay. So, uh, I'll, uh, by you doing that? I'll I'll uh, I'll, try, I'll go to Sterling, and I'll be uh, uh Sterling. Um, yeah. <laughs> listen, <laughs> I'm I'm experiencing some weird things. My fingernail just uh, came off of my finger. And it's weird. If I think very, very deeply about it, it actually is like I can see from its perspective. Very strange. You mind if I have you hold this or I know it's totally gross, but you're mostly made of metal. Um, if you could just hold on to it for me for a little I while, have... just as a test. I have no stomach to turn here. Let's. Uh... All right, now what? Okay, now you run that way, and I'll run this way, and then uh, it might take a while, but I'll tell you if it works. All right. So, yeah, so we'll run just quickly opposite each other, and what do I have to do, Jay, to experience okay. this? So, yeah, so as an action, yep. um, you enter a trance. Uh, okay. You have to be within 10 miles of the person. Uh, the okay. trance lasts for one minute, uh, but it ends early if you dismiss it. Um, or you are incapacitated. During the trance, you can see and hear from the token as if you were located where it is. While you are using your senses at the token's location, you are blinded and deafened in regard to your own surroundings. Wow, okay, when so... When the trance the, ends, the token the, is harmlessly destroyed. Okay, so the Falfer who is kind of doing the trance, he is useless at that point. Yeah, He's yeah. In the you, are, you are out, and your senses are transported to this item. Okay. And then, um, like, so when I'll, the trance ends, the token disappears. So you can do it once. Okay. So I'll ch I'll test this with Sterling. Like, I'll go into a trance for the minute, and just for the sake of brevity, yeah. uh, test it out, yeah. and and I'll be like, "Whoa, this is crazy!" And uh, and I'll wake up from the trance, go over to Sterling. Thank you so much, my friend. Um, this might come in handy. I could see everything from the perspective of your hand. It's crazy. Oh, did you hear everything too? Yes. Uh, my full senses, it seems, other than touch, I believe. Oh, then um, forgive me for what I said. Uh, I don't. I don't think you're losing your mind. Uh, <laughs> if, if it really, uh, you know, I love you, buddy. I would not blame you if you did. And it, it uh, in your hand, it turned to dust, Sterling. Um, at at a point when you knew he came back out of the trance. Um. It was destroyed, and Falfer, you still have an empty space where that fingernail was. Okay, so I'm assuming short rest, long rest, long he recovers. Rest. Okay, cool. Long rest. Um, so I'll just start bragging about what I can do to all the other people in the. In and the you party. also got the sense that when he was holding it, you could have 
instead sent him a telepathic message. Okay, that was cool. 25 words. It lasted a minute. So I can either do that or um, I can uh, t tele t telepathically send messages. It's crazy. Um, so these hags. Very useful. Is he lying? No, he's telling the truth. You can tell he's telling the truth. Um, yeah, cool. And there's other parts of your body that you can remove to do that too, but you can look at your features and... I, I certainly will. <laughs> Thank you for not <laughs> sharing. There you go. Yeah, I'll leave that say to you. Say if you needed something smaller than a fingernail. Mm. Yeah. All right. So moving right along, you all pack your things. Oh um, packing your bags. Uh, what are you doing with your tent? Uh, well... The tent was Vistani, so you can leave it there. It's a large tent. You're not going to be able to necessarily carry it um, where you go. You do have a Vardo, Travas. You can have them take it to wherever they're going, or you can take it with you. So that well, you, this, you this is where it gets can... kind of tricky because I they did RP it in the Discord that they pulled it to the Vistana. Well, then that's what's but happening. I, I'd really like to have it back. <laughs> Um, okay, so we'll say for now you've told them to take it, and you can get it back at the Fistana grounds. Yeah, can we do that today? Uh, no, because they're not moving to the Fistana grounds for a day or two. In our game oh, time. Oh, I'd really like hmm. it back. Yeah. Just, you know, oh, keep I have it away from Vardo. that guy. Is, sorry, I have another Vardo, because I, I, we stole a Vardo full of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's got the treasure in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can take that Vardo. My personal Vardo's at the Vistana. And, and your uh, yeah, we'll and take the horses, the, yeah. yeah. And my horses. The, well, the horses for that one, or your horses, whatever which one you want. You have two sets of horses. Yeah. Oh, man. What am I... Okay. And you can oh, move I'm half... Like king. You can move double speed. Like, it takes half the, half the speed to move across Barovia and Vardo. So... Ah. So you guys have a, a vehicle to move a little quicker, if you want. Yeah, and Esmeralda has a Vardo too. Yes, she does. Not here. Yeah, it's here. Yeah, it's here. It it's is here. We have the it's tent. We have the tent and your Vardo. Yeah. I and thought it Vardo. was at the other camp. No, it's still here. Oh well, I will take that along with us. Okay. So you pack up the Vardos with all of your things, and you head out of Gakis, saying your goodbyes and your farewells, uh, and your see you soon's. Um, where are you all headed? Argenvassel. Argenvassel. Yes. Mm. Yes. Okay. All right. It takes you about three and a half hours or so to arrive. Um, we'll say around uh, midday, noon, one o'clock, or the equivalent thereof, um, as you pull up to Argenvassel. So very glad that I don't feel like I'm rushing to just keep up to everyone all the time. Like, I can keep pace now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. All right. What are you talking about? You're always in the little baby Bjorn. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Uh, <laughs> what is what is Sterling speed? Forty. Forty. Okay. I was wondering who was the fastest. Okay. It's you, isn't it? No, you're fast. You're you're forty. I'm thirty-five. I was wondering. Oh, okay. You travel the typical road, um, a little bit more shielded and and safe in the Vardo. Um, you have two Vardos, and so you're both kind of traveling within. Um, I'm assuming, Esmeralda, you are leading your Vardo on... You're, you're, you're driving your Vardo, and Travas, I'm assuming you're also piloting yours. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to offer... I, I'm going to offer to Dimitri... I, I, I've, never, I've never done that. I, I've walked the Vardos. I've walked the horses pulling the Vardo every time. Mm. He's never ridden a horse or had a control such yep. a thing. Uh, so I'm going to ask Dimitri, do you want to try? You want to try? Uh, and Dimitri, you have some quite a bit of experience with horses, be having been a knight. Mm. Uh, it's been a little while since I've ridden to top a horse. Let's see if I can. Old muscle memory. <laughs> You're going to do great. It's just like riding a, a horse. <laughs> well, you would you would sit on the Vardo and of course have reins for both horses, and you would. He's going to do great. Yeah. Yes. Pilot. All right. And I will. Oh, and pilot. if I if I can tell if I can tell that they like, not that they don't know what they're doing, but they're a little worried. I would just go over to the horse and just try to calm it a little bit. I have a plus eight to animal handling. Nice. I just want to 
just make sure everything's good. Yeah, it uh, is a smooth ride. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Smooth sailing. So, out of character, but just trying to understand, because I think I was still confused earlier when we talked about it. We could talk about it after as well. What, how long, how many days is it between now and before the Vistani leave the Festana camp? They leave? So it's about... Yes. Yeah, it's a little while. So it's at least a day or so until they leave for the Vistana camp. Uh Uh-huh. And then I think they're there for three or four days. Okay, I was wondering how long it, how long that period of being in the the Fustana camp is, because I just to make sure things make sense. Yeah, I I, I wouldn't want to like go off on like some big quest knowing what has already been done. Sure. Right, I'm just trying to figure that out. Yeah, continue. Right. Mm. Yeah, um, and as you approach Argonvos, sorry, the the clouds kind of get heavy. You hear distant thunder, and it begins to drizzle. Um, but the beacon kind of shooting across the countryside. Um, at this point, you have some downtime. Um, at this point, as you approach Argenvos Tolt, you can stay here for as long as you want. You can travel. You can do the things that you all want to do. We're going to do some kind of in-between adventure actions now um, gotcha. with the time that you want to spend which will make up for the time that they're in the Fistana grounds and Thank, all of that okay. sort of yep. thing. That's, kind of that's making up. my brain feel better. I'm yeah. like, what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You approach Argon Vostholt. Um, where do you want to put the Vardos, um, the horses, all of that sort of thing? What's your kind of approach uh, and your... What, do, what would you like to do? Is there a stable for the horses? In this? Uh, there used to be a stable, but it is basically rubble. Um, to the east of Argenvost Holt, um, outside mm. to the east. So there is no longer a stable. Um, so there is there is much to work to be done one. within Argenvost Holt if you want to take some time, kind of making it more homely, homey, yeah. and all that sort mm-hmm. of thing. Buying totally. things for it in town, whatever you want to do. Yeah, I definitely would like to rebuild a stable. Okay. To start. Sure. I'll help with that. Okay. I can help with that as well. I can. I have to get all I that can. treasure inside somewhere too. Yep. Yeah, that has to be kept safe. I would. Argen, Argen has rooms, especially like places for keeping stuff. So we yeah. definitely can get everything in. Yeah. There, there is a there is a treasure vault that was used by Argenvost yeah. in the in the in the uh, yeah in the Sounds mansion. Like a suitable place. Let me just bring that up. Um, there's already treasure in it, right? Um, it's, <laughs> it's full of treasure. I don't think you guys were in <laughs> there yet. There was nothing left. Um, the dragon's vault. The, it's an iron door leading to the room. It hangs open on a single rusty hinge, so it's no longer secure, but it was a room used for that. Uh, it has obviously been forced open and emptied, uh, but all there is is empty chest and a chest in shattered vases, um, obviously having been plundered long ago. Uh, but it is a, a, a secure... Um, le- uh, li- lead-lined vault, hmm. and oh, it exists. Um, it exists on the third floor. So, for instance, if you put a Vardo in there and it exploded, it would contain that explosion. Yes, but it is on the third lined. floor, so getting a Vardo up there would be difficult. Right, <laughs> but you could take, you know, what uh, you what you would normally think is take. The valuables out of the Vardo. Yes. Right. Yes. You it could in do that. The whole. You Some could. would do that. Others would wouldn't. Mm-hmm. I will. Yeah. I will ask Sterling to help me uh, <laughs> with moving the treasures. Uh, can I? Can I uh, read what what we have? Absolutely. L- let me just say that. Uh, sorry. Let me just say real quick. Um, I ha- we had three people or four people um, helping with the stable. Uh, stable. There were through. I'll help with the stable as well, just to help it move along. Okay. All right. Yeah. So more. yeah, I, I feel like it's going to take more than one day to build a stable, oh. and less than one to yeah. carry the stuff to the keep. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah I, no, I, no. I would so, say yeah. that you spend the rest of today just settling in, moving the treasure in, and I would mm. say at least take three or four days 
to build the stable. Yeah. Yeah. Back up to. Some I, I would sort say of... that after the after we've moved the stuff inside, I'm I'm helping with the stables too. Okay. All Same. right. So you can read Same. off what what is there, and if you want to disperse it, or if it's just party treasure to be to be used later, whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, I'll just. Uh, I'm just planning to move it in, um, and then I don't, I don't know what we're gonna do with it. Uh, there's a wooden chest with 800 EP electrum. Is that yep. there? Electrum. Yeah. Eight eight hundred. Uh, there's an iron chest with four hundred and fifty gold. There's a wooden throne with gold inlay and decorative stones worth seven hundred and fifty gold. There's a ten foot square rug with a unicorn motif worth seven hundred and fifty gold. Uh, and there's wow. two gold hubcaps that I stole. <laughs> and then there's a small with a sun wooden motif on it with a golden sun motif. Yes. Yeah. Very important, <laughs> yeah. the sun motif. Yeah. And then I'm going to actually give to Falfer the twelve the, the wooden box with twelve potions in stoppered gourds. Um wow. they're Happy. actually non-magical elixirs sold by Vistani to naive strangers. <laughs> but I'm gonna give them to Falfer. <laughs> hey, are you gonna tell them they're magical? Falfer, these are magic. They help to keep the the dangers of the fog, Zoe. Um, oh, I'm definitely appreciative. How much are they worth? Do you need anything for them? No, it's all for all of us. You you take them and, and use them how you need to. They will keep you safe. Deception check, you... Travas, and insight check, Falfer. Okay. Ugh, oh, 19. I have a plus oh, 9. 17. <laughs> <laughs> you believe him. You think that these are magical. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll be like, uh, I will, I will thank you for trusting me with them. I will guard them with my life. There's 12 of them. <laughs> very valuable. Very. Thank you. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's awesome. it. Okay, so you just, for now, you just kind of move that stuff into the mansion, into the vault um, to be dealt with later. Okay. Anything else you want to do during your time at Argonvost over the next... We can even say we take like five days or so. So I'd say three of those days, if everyone's working on it together, I'd say three days to build a, a decent stable. Um, and then you have two days of time during that. So Are we okay. able to inspect like all the floors, all the all the rooms last yeah. time? Yeah. Okay. And what, what I'll do is I will release new maps onto the Discord in your Argonvost channel so that you Ooh. guys have the ability to role play even now, I'd say that if you want to, over the or, in this week between now and next week, will be the time that you spent during during this time in Argonvostolt. So you guys can go in there and role play and set up your areas. Um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll assign rooms and all of that kind of stuff as well when we have the maps available. Um, and then you can also off off board between now and next session. You can also tell me if there's any furniture you want to buy, what rooms you want to claim, all that kind of stuff. Awesome. And we can sort that out in between sessions. Um, one thing that Noggins does for sure is he's had it, but it's just getting kind of broken uh, just because I think it broke during the trip here. Um, and he'll, he'll take some time to just fix it. But he finally fixes his arm shield that he has. Mm. Um, I've always had it. I guess never used it. And I'm like, he, um, I think... I think it might, um, it might be smarter to just be a little more sturdy. Um, so that's, that's that. Uh, also, um, and this is probably like later on in the week, uh, I need to um, check in with the elder from Gakis and do some things. Uh, don't worry, I'm not just running off. It's just something I need to do. Uh, you all can focus on getting Argonvost still settled and good. And so Noggins heads out for the better part of a day. Stay safe, Noggins. I well, will. You, far, actually, Noggins. you actually see as he leaves Argonvost hold, um, he kind of looks around, sighs, and then he just collapses on the ground. And as he does, he turns into a, a gorgeous um, dark brown skinned uh, elk with horns, antlers that are purple, blue, and green. 
um, and he starts off towards the Vistana camp. Awesome. Hmm. Cool. Okay. Uh, so I wanted to take a bit of time with Godfrey to just work out a few potential plans of assault against Strahd when the time comes. Okay. Uh, so we'll just like plot out, you know, on, on paper diagram out, you know, what do we know about Strahd's castle? What goes where? Do we know about, you know, you know, where, where, you know, it, also like diagram out you know, a little bit of uh, where we think the sun sword is, where okay. it might be, yep. try and track it down. He, um, he's never been in the castle. Um, they fought a large battle and it's been centuries. And so his, his memory is a little shady, but you start to kind of like get some sort of understanding. Um, give me, I gave him a history check. Just give me like an intelligence check on that, just to see what you can kind of start to, just by seeing the outside of it and kind of understanding some basic knowledge of, of its infrastructure. Okay, that's a 13. Okay, noted. Okay. So you start to just kind of get the information, gather whatever information he has about Strahd, about his forces, about the history of the place, all of that sort of stuff. Sure. As, as I'm walking around through Argenvost Holt, am I able to see, am I aware of Sterling and Godfrey doing this planning? Uh, it's up to Sterling whether or not he wants to keep it secret or not. I oh, know it would be open to to anybody that wants to be a part yeah. of it. I imagine you guys are just sitting in the study, kind of doing this, going through maybe some old books that, that are in the in the library. Um, so so I'll head over to Sterling, having you know had made this deal with the Hags, and remind him, <laughs> uh, Sterling, I I could not uh, help but overhear you and Godfrey working together to map out the plans for uh, a Raven for the Castle Ravenloft entry and again uh i believe the hags were being truthful when they offered their uh, their help in getting us in undetected if no, I, I understand but w without knowing what they know now uh, we can still have plans of attack oh sure no I, I did not mean to intrude i was simply suggesting in the future if you need more information that uh, i'm available for you Certainly, of course. Now, is there anything you remember from what we've been told that Godfrey and I missed here? Just, uh, and I'll just kind of like point out some things on the on the paper. Okay. Yep. And I'll I'll divulge whatever it is that I do remember or recall, which is probably not very much. It's not much because again, she said that she will let you know when mm -hmm. she'll basically walk you through as a, as a guide right. when you're ready to go in. Cool. Okay. I'll relay that. Adam, what would you like to do in the time, in that two, couple days? Um, so I'll help with this staple and also the kind of destroyed half of Argon I'll I'll clean it up a little. There's probably still some, some spider corpses that uh, we can kind of get rid of. And I'll just, like I can't, I probably probably have the material to rebuild that whole half of the building but just to sort of prepare it for renovating okay and you can also you know in your time here you can also find help to 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 find workers that could potentially come and renovate with the gold that you have and you've collected from treasure and, and so on and so forth so you have okay. you have the ability to in between kind of actions we can discuss that you probably have to go into Velaki or, or Barovi to find workers or whatever but you can absolutely do that. You know, don't tell them about the vault. Yeah. Yeah, probably not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe I'll do that. I'll, I'll recruit some help. Okay, so you want to take take some time to find out, get some quotes on on things. <laughs> what, what? Um, so the, the main damage structurally is the um, east wing is completely uh, caved in. And uh, so either you clear that and just make it an exterior wall, or you'd have to rebuild that, which would take quite a bit. It's like three floors of just crumbled rubble. There's also yeah, openings in the roof. Like there's caved in areas in the roof, which is letting water pool in the, um, it's a real fixer upper. Uh, <laughs> I'd is, like to find somebody who is most likely part of a guild. 
rather than attempt. Yeah, you could also potentially myself. hire some of the Vistani to do it as well. Um, and I could even work it into the Discord where they can spend their crafting roles during the days to help you rebuild Argonvost and you could pay them to do it or whatever. So. I, I vote we hire some awesome Discordians. Okay, so yes. I would suggest that if you want to do that, that you head into the Discord um, this week and try and get some help in doing that. And we can we can establish that. That can also be a part of things that you and I and John Daddy need to talk about <laughs> that we still haven't talked about. Yep. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Yeah, so there is there's a big hole in the roof, and it's causing water and rubble to seep into the audience chamber. So all of that could be cleaned up. So if if, if a couple of you want to take those two extra days after you've built the stable to kind of clear the rubble and prep it for renovations, we can say that that maybe that I, I don't know. If you tell me if that's the priority or if the east wing is the priority. It's up to you. I would say like not having a, a hole in the ceiling that's leaking. Rainwater is probably my top. Yeah, personally, that's probably it. Okay, so you spend the time clearing the rubble. I'll say that it, it's the full two days to basically clear it all and then prepping for fixing of that roof. Cool, awesome. Okay. Uh, anyone else in between actions? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to try at some point to ride a horse. To find my mom okay. in Barovia. Okay. Um, you take the time. Not to find her. Like, I know where she lives. Yep. I just, yeah. Four hours. It takes you about four hours to travel to Barovia one day. Yeah. Um, the village. Sorry. Yeah. I, I need to go uh, find the things I hid in the Vardo <laughs> okay. that we didn't take out. Okay. Uh, there is a. Well, we'll get to what it is. Okay. Uh, I'll put it in my pack. I'll get on the horse and I'll ride to her. Um, and I, I basically want to tell her, like, I, I'm doing it. Like, I, I found them. I found the, the Dumbliners and I'm, and I'm helping them. Uh, and I, I'm going to show her. I'm going to give her uh, this uh, jewelry box. It's an onyx jewelry box with gold filigree. Uh, worth 250 gold and two uh, pieces of jewelry that are worth 50 gold each. Wow. And I'm going to give her those um, to show her, like, I'm I'm doing it. And I'm going to take out one of the spider legs that I have and put it on the table yeah. and just, just tell her about the adventures and, like, the fighting, the monsters, and uh, the things that I've, I've seen and lighting the beacon and all of that and just... Uh, in hopes that she's like proud of me that I've, I've done it like I, I left home uh, and I'm and I'm doing it I'm living the dream yeah. and sitting in your um, leaky modest hovel that is basically just two room three rooms um, like two bedrooms and a kitchen pretty much um, you know she is filled with joy and gratitude um, she says no 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 please keep it you may need it. Um, and she talks about the fact that she's well on in years and what is she going to do with such riches? And it's more gold than she's ever seen in her lifetime. You, you can live in comfort. I have more. And her eyes like widen and she says, oh, well, thank you. And she, she thanks you and she hugs you and she embraces you and she wells up with tears. Or after our touching uh, afternoon together with some tea and some gold pieces, I will head back okay. to uh, to meet the Donbrinus. All right. Before the before he comes back, Jay, um, I'm not sure how long he's gone. He said that he was four hours traveling away. I turn to the rest of the Donbringers and go, "Ooh, ooh, one of our party me members is gone. We best uh, make sure everyone everyone is safe, huh? Oh, it's just Travas. Never mind." <laughs> That's hilarious. So you basically mm -hmm. leave, uh, I would say, you basically leave right in the morning, Travas, and you're back basically at sunset. Yeah. Travel four yeah, hours, yeah. spend some the time. The difference is he told us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he didn't. I didn't. <laughs> no, I, didn't. <laughs> I would actually try, probably try to just sneak away and like, you know, tell the stable people, oh, I'm going to be helping in the in the, the hall there, and then yeah. tell the hall people, oh, I'm over at the stables. <laughs> 
And you can also <laughs> I think uh, somewhere an, else. Another thought too is you could also hire guards if you want to protect your mm. stuff here. Like there's lots of opportunities for. Uh, in fact, there's a whole section I think of in between actions in the player's handbook that talks about things that you can do in between adventures and spend money on and so on. So we can dig into that this week. Look, all I'm saying is if people want to keep sneaking off, that's fine. But if you go down and you want healing, I'll be a goat and I can't. <laughs> so it's cool. Uh, I was hoping that, that Jay wouldn't just give me a random encounter while I went to see my mom at 952 towards the end of the stream. <laughs> no. yeah. uh, when are we throwing the house party is where is what I'm wondering. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I was, so when when Noggins after like the first day and he helped, he would have then went to Festana, came back a couple of days later, literally two days later, is when he would have said, uh, I'm doing something again. Don't worry, I'll be fine. Um, you know that big tree? Um, the the, the Gothias tree in, in Yester Hill? Um, I never told you all, but when I came, well, when I fell into this nightmare, um, after whoever it was found me, they dropped me at Yester Hill. And I guess it's because we both were druids. I don't know. And they did some really bad stuff to me. I guess trying to get information maybe for Strahd, how I got here. Um, and when that didn't work, that's when they sent me to Babala Saga. Um, me, myself, and a couple of the Vistani were going to go destroy that tree for good. So don't worry, I'll be, I, I, I can handle myself. I'm very good at that. And they seem very capable. So, um, you're all willing to help. No, 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 no. I don't think I don't, this is, it's important, but you don't need to, you focus here. I might have your voice in my head when it happens. So it's. I'll, uh, I will, uh, I'll take off. Assuming I've had a long rest, I'll take off one of my fingernails and pass it to Noggins and say, uh, take this with you. Uh, it will help me to uh, to send you messages and hear from you while you are gone. No matter how used to this I already am, it's still nasty. <laughs> no, it's, it's pretty gross. <laughs> but useful? Yeah, and you noticed actually, Falfer, that over the next day, it was your fingernail growing back was almost like a timer. So that oh. by the next day, it had grown back full and you could remove it again. So, yeah, I'll take that. And then that means once we were all done with that, I would have messaged Falfer saying, it's all done. We're good. I killed the bad druid. I stumped on her. It was fun as a goat. Just I'll, re I'll relay to the team. He did it. I stumped on the, th uh, the thing. He explained it to me in the thing. I forget now. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm just hammering away at something like, <laughs> great. <laughs> uh, and you, uh, you, um, for those at home, that was a quest that Brandon actually DM'd that I listened to the entirety of, where Noggins and some people who were uh, who won the spots from the Vistani Discord community to go on a quest to destroy the Gulf Tree. It was it was brilliant. So That's that awful. actually happened in. It's in a good time. Shout Italy. out to Brandon. <laughs> so. It was an awesome adventure. Um, you all settle in uh, into your fifth day in Argenvostolt, having some downtime and getting your hands dirty in a productive way, um, in a nonviolent way, uh, building the stable and preparing the place for some much needed renovations. One um, last thing I'm going to start just really quickly. I will have gone to Falfer and I'll say, um, though you are now this, if you're going to talk with the hags or be this, it would be useful if, and I switch to Sylvan and I say, you learn what this is. And then he realizes he can't hear it. And he says, would you learn how to speak like us? 
So I'm going to just start the journey of Falfor learning Sylvan. Teaching him Sylvan? Cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Nice. Hmm. Very, very cool. Um, awesome. Um, anything else within that five days? Any last minute thoughts or things you'd like to do before you settle into the evening, the fifth day? At the end of the... Uh no, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to go over to, to Esmeralda and the rest of the crew is kind of there working on the on the building and the, and the stable and stuff and be like, uh, do you think... Do you, do you think I look different? Like, is it weird different? Am I still... Do you guys still think of me the same way even though I'm I'm totally different like this? Is it weird? I just kind of give a shoulder a shove. Yeah, it's still you. Oh, okay. <laughs> just making sure. <laughs> hammer, you, hammer, hammer. Do you feel like? Do you feel okay? I mean, I, it's different for sure. Uh, but you know, uh, I have learned that uh, being amongst friends is probably one of the more important things uh, that I've learned about myself. So, uh, no, thank you. That was very nice. And I'll shove her back in the, but in the knee, because that's all I can reach. <laughs> Off the top of the... <laughs> hey! Off the top hey, of the Hey, are you all right down there? <laughs> all right. And, and I realize that's something I could have done, because I think, I think we just need to make sure Arkenfoss isn't just sound, but it's just, it feels like a home. So there's going to be one day where Noggin says, don't talk to me. Like, okay, maybe if you have another spider leg, but, that, that, but that's it. And I'll be in the back of Argon Vossold, um, communing and understanding. And over the eight hours, I will have cast plant growth, and it will enrich the land around Argon Voss for a full year. Wow. What? Very wow. cool. Very cool. Mm -hmm. That's super cool. Good. All right. And I try to cheer him on in Sylvan, but fail terribly week one or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You see a fire grow on underneath you for a second as I say, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's it. As you settle in on the fifth day, um, there is an echoing knock at the main doors of Argenvostholt. Um, and something you haven't heard, but the knocker that exists, um, you hear the creak and the bang. As you all kind of come down to greet, um, you see a young messenger sitting on the stoop. Um, dark hair, pale skin, Barovian boy. And he says, um, uh, are you? And he, very timid, somewhat, um, not scared, but timid, uh, says, are, are you the Dawnbringers? I have, I have. I, I have, oh, sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you go off, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I have my dagger, like I'm picking my teeth with it. I'm like, maybe. <laughs> He says, I, I have I have this letter for you. Here, please, take. And he kind of like throws it in the door and he turns around and he kind of runs off to his horse, gets on it, and he's like... Grr, 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 grr. <laughs> and on the floor, you see a, a sealed uh, envelope. Uh, there's a seal on it with an M on it. And it's a, it's a letter that is folded up. Mm. Ooh, mail! I'll, uh, I'll walk over to where she is. Okay. As you pick it up, you break the seal and you open it up and the letter says please you have done so much for my family and for this land but we are in need of you again Valaki is in grave need things are not good if you could spare some time please we could use your help and it's signed Erwin Martikov and that is where we're going to end the session for this evening Oh. oh, I love this game so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I love you guys. Two weeks off is too long. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so much happened today. I know. It was a good session. Guys, thank you so much. Everyone who watched at home, thank you for watching. Um, if you're interested in the Discord, it's a great place, as you can see, to be. Ouch. Um, and, uh, and we've all had characters and playing, and it's just such an awesome experience. So, um, again, just this past week, um, I won't share who, but I got this message, um, which brought me to tears saying uh, that this person wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the show because 
you know, things are really difficult and this person deals with depression and anxiety and considered ending it and watching our show and joining the Discord felt like family and kind of kept this person going. Um, we get messages like that almost every week. And so that is what this is about. Um, and I'm so very excited. Again, if you're interested in RealmCon and meeting us and all of that craziness that might happen in Toronto in October, jump on the Discord and send us a message in the RealmCon channel to let us know um, because that's what this is about. It's about meeting and hanging out and finally being in the same room as everyone else um, and being able to play D&D and just hang out and chill and, and, and be human again. Um, if you like what you've seen, consider following us and all that stuff. I don't want to ruin what I just said with all that stuff, but um, we love you guys. We couldn't do this without you. And we will see you Thursday for Aftermath uh, and then next Monday for Episode 2 of Season 4. Bye, guys. We love you guys! <laughs>